Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode of I'll Call You Right Back podcast with me, your host. My name is Chad Medved. This is my show. Appreciate you being here as usual. Uh, if you are a new guest, you know, welcome to the show. Uh, very much appreciated uh, that you are uh, taking a chance to listen to, you know, another podcast, you know, technically another drop in a bucket. There's a thousand podcasts out there and you could be listening to any one of them, but you are here listening to uh, my podcast. And that is, uh, you know, that's much appreciated. Take pride in this. Uh, it's been rocky the last couple months a little bit, you know, we just been getting our footing back, you know, mentally I'm getting my footing back. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm getting the, getting the, getting the fire started, uh, so to speak. But, um, I got a good clip of episodes coming up. Uh, you know, I got some, I got some good interviews lined up and, uh, they are all going to be, uh, food based, uh, episodes. Uh, very excited about that. We'll get to that in a minute though, but kind of wanted to just touch on, you know, some things that have been going on in life. I mean, you know, what have I been doing on the weeks that I've been taking off? Um, and the answer is, you know, a whole lot of, a whole lot of just, you know, kind of living, being an adult a little bit, uh, you know, summer's coming up. You know what that means? We got to get our fucking yards, uh, tip top. And you know how bad that sucks. You know, I have a whole hillside of just old disintegrated mulch that needed cleaned out. And, uh, you know, God love my wife, but she let me know about it. Uh, and, uh, you know, as she should, you know what I mean? As she should, she let me know that, Hey, get that damn hillside cleaned up. And uh, that's what I had to do. You know, I had to uh, take a day and just, you know, take 5,700 wheelbarrows of mulch and, you know, toss it over a hill. Uh, But on top of that, you know, in this hillside of mulch, I have, there was probably, let's say, you know, to be generous, 40 boulders that needed moved. And whenever I say boulders, I'm talking about stones that are, you know, anywhere from the size of a cantaloupe up to a size of a beach ball. And that's no exaggeration, but these are scattered along my hill and I had to move all these stones like Robert Redford did in the last castle. Uh, that is a, that's a reference that not everyone is going to get. But if you've seen the movie, The Last Castle, that's what I felt like. Uh, But yeah, I mean, summer's coming up. We got grass cutting. You know, we're all adults. You know, I don't assume there's a lot of, uh, you know, I don't want to say the word children, but like younger people that are, you know, we're adults. You know, everyone that's listening to this is an adult and we all have responsibilities and sometimes they get overwhelming and sometimes you are just not fit mentally to with uh, to uphold all of these things and you just need to take a break. And that's what I've been doing. Been maintaining, been living, been getting my house ready a little bit. Uh, you know, ready, but like getting a little bit more ship shape. And, you know, besides that, I've been watching some stuff and I've been reading and, you know, I don't really even touch on that that much anymore in the intros. I try to, I try to keep them a little bit tight, but me and my wife are into better call Saul right now. Um, I have previously watched Breaking Bad, but recently I just wanted to rewatch it again. And and I rewatched it again. And Antoinette was like, I'm not watching this. Uh, I hate Brian Cranston. And I'm like, you're a lunatic. So as we got past season one of Breaking Bad, Antoinette's, you know, rubbernecking, you know, watching. I see her peeking along and watching along with the story. And, uh, you know, Not even a week later, you know, she's invested. She wants to watch the show. So uh, what I'm getting at is we watched all of Breaking Bad. Fantastic. You know, if you haven't seen it, I would I would urge you to watch it. One of the best series of TV in uh, in history. Uh, And then obviously Better Call Saul is a spinoff of Breaking Bad uh, featuring uh, uh, Bob Odenkirk as Saul Goodman, who is, you know, Brian Cranston's uh, lawyer uh, in Breaking Bad. And I'll be honest with you. I didn't know if I was going to, you know, attach on to Better Call Saul like I did Breaking Bad, but 
I will tell you that I am. Um, in fact, I almost like it a little bit more. We're almost uh, into season three of Better Call Saul, and it is a sensational show. Uh, Bob Odenkirk, you know, a national treasure. Uh, really love that guy. But yeah, in my free time, we've been watching some stuff. I'm watching Band of Brothers. We've been watching some insane movies, you know, uh, recent, just off the top of my head, Sound of Metal, a fantastic movie, very, very uh, emotional, just a heavy movie. Uh, we watched that. We went to go see Late Night with the Devil, which is a new uh, horror film that is, you know, it's kind of like an independent horror film. I don't know. It's different. I'll tell you that. But we've just been watching shit like that. And I've been reading, you know, I've still been reading a good bit. Uh, I'm in the middle of a Stephen King book right now, uh, The Eyes of a Dragon. And it's a fantasy book written by Stephen King. Whenever I say fantasy, it's like, you know, medieval times, you know, kings, princes, dragons, shit like that. And it is fantastic. You know, I just love reading. It's insane. I know I've mentioned it on here before that I'm going to get a book club uh, that I'm going to get a book club started and that is still very much on the agenda but like you know we're getting there you know what i mean we're getting there uh you should read this book club you heard it here first it's coming here soon just bear with me uh but uh i I don't know that's what that's what my life has been up to recently you know we've been going on walks with the dog and uh you know just just trying to enjoy ourselves, going to dinner, you know, the whole thing, you know, the whole deal. We got some good stuff coming up in the city of Pittsburgh this summer. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to get back on the bikes and uh, just keep uh, just keep ripping through life with uh, with my wife and my dog. So uh, again, thank you for being here and listening to this week's episode and listening to me rant for a few minutes about my life. But the real reason that yins are here is uh, to to hear about a woman named Dagny who owns a little spot in Carnegie called Dagny's Eatery. And she is a fantastic human being that, uh, like I said, whenever I say a spot, uh, I don't necessarily say a restaurant, even though I guess it technically is. But uh, we talk about in the episode how you would describe what Dagny's Eatery is. And I think the best way to say it is almost like a bodega style where you could go in order things from behind the counter. You know, there's a table to stand next to if you want to eat quick, but it's not a place that you really like just sit down for a meal. That being said, it is fantastic. Uh, She is open five days a week. Uh, Currently, some days or sometimes she'll open up for six days a week. But like I said, right on Main Street in Carnegie, next to Carnegie Coffee Company, next to Slice. Uh, I think that's what it's called, Slice. But it is a uh, little nook of uh, goodies over there ran by Dagny. She is a one-woman show, woman-owned business, and she is absolutely killing it. Uh, She randomly was following me on Instagram. Uh, My wife was following her, and I was like, what's up with this place? Is this new? Like, where's this at? So we went, checked it out. Out, and uh, we've been going back ever since. You know, probably a year and a half we've been going there, but it, it it really is a great place. You know, we like to go on the weekends for a slice of the breakfast pizza, which is like a nice focaccia that is, uh, you know, ha- some great toppings on there. Eggs. You got you got. She does all. She does a whole variety of things. Breakfast pizzas. Uh, she has cinnamon rolls. She has you know cheesecakes. She has sandwiches like deli sandwiches that are absolutely insane. And uh, she is hand scratch making. You know all the sauces. She's making sides. You know there's a uh, you know it's a grab and go spot. Uh, it's a grab and go spot that's a little bit more elevated, if you will. Uh, in her freezer or in her fridges, right uh, next to the counter, you might find an orzo salad. You might find a feta spread. You might find a uh, garlic. Uh, spinach, garlic, aioli, you know, she is just going crazy in this kitchen, making what she likes to make and, uh, what she is passionate about ultimately. And this week we sit down and we learn about her life. We learn about, you know, how a woman in her thirties goes from spending 13 years at PNC bank to uprooting her life, saying, screw it. And just betting all on herself and opening her own food 
food establishment, which is Dagny's Eatery. And it is a fantastic conversation. She is a fantastic person. That's why I keep going back to Dagny's Eatery. Uh, it's easy to be able to write people off if they are not doing good stuff. You know what I mean? If you go to a place and you don't like it, you're not going to go back. I feel like it's kind of a, a test to how great her stuff is that I just keep going back all the time. That's why you always see, that's why you always see me post Oak or that's why you always see me post from Oak Hill Post. You know, I go there damn near every weekend. We go to Dagny's whenever we're not going there. It's like we're it's Dagny's Oak Hill Post. It's like these are places that I just go all the time because they're incredible and the people behind them are incredible people. And uh I'm just happy to be able to kind of offer a story along to go along with this incredible stuff that they are producing each and every day. You know, you walk into Dagny's, you could get some incredible food at all times. You know, she is uh, she she's she's doing some great stuff back there in this, you know, small little space. She is really utilizing every square inch and uh she just keeps she just keeps doing it and it's all great. And I can't thank her enough for all the goodies that she brought over to me. I can't thank her enough for being a great person and donating to the Odd Pittsburgh Benefit Bus Bingo. Uh, you know, she that 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 goes to show you as well. Like she reached out to me and she was like, "Hey, I'd love to donate to this. You know, let me know what I could do." You know, she's just out here trying to support good people because she is a good person in herself. And uh, it's easy to support good people who do what they do very well. And she does what she does very well. So I urge you to go take a stroll over to Carnegie and go check out Dagny's Eatery. Go grab a slice of breakfast pizza on the weekend. Go grab a cinnamon roll or a blueberry roll. Those are some of her flagship things. I am partial to the cheesecake, best cheesecake I've ever had. I will leave you at that. I will quit talking your ears off. Sorry for the long intro this week, but we had to talk about some stuff. So without further ado, episode 274 of I'll Call You Right Back podcast with Dagny's Eatery. I got to use the telephone. Hello? I'll call you right back podcast. This is the first one I've done in a while. Really? This is the first one I've done in probably over a month. How often do you do these? Well, I mean, I, I usually do them every week yeah. and I usually have like multiple interviews a week, but oh gosh, uh, it's just been a tough time. Yeah. Um, toss some headphones on. on. Yeah. yeah, you'll get the, it get, brings you... <laughs> Brings you all the way in. Is that all right? It's big. So is this going to stretch out? Yeah. Is that good? Oh, okay. That's yeah. all right? Yeah, I can hear Does that hear sound you. all right? Uh-huh. Am I supposed to just hear you, right? You need the volume up or down? No. Is you, you can't hear yourself? I can. Yeah, I can hear me now. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I know. Everyone Everyone gets sketched out whenever they hear their voice. They're like, oh. Manly. <laughs> Not really everyone ever has the opportunity to like, no. you know, talk into a microphone. Yeah. So it's. I don't know. I guess it's a. I guess catches you off guard, but I don't know. I, I was weird about it in the beginning too, but you get used to it. Can I move this? Yeah, move it. To... Yeah, but you just want to keep it like you know, keep it close, really to, close to. My mind. Yeah, get comfortable as you can. Um, <laughs> but I'm excited about this. This is a long time coming. That's be fun. Uh, I don't know. I was trying to think like how I came across your 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 page mm-hmm. with uh, your spot. I think that you guys. I think you followed me one day, yeah. and maybe my wife was telling me about mm-hmm. it. And then we came and checked you out, and we've been there ever since. Yeah. I don't know how I started following you. Some, some way. Some way on Instagram. I know. And someone, I just started listening to them. I think you started doing some food people, and that's where I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. And then it was like different people all over. Well, when did you open up? September 21. So like almost three years ago. September 21, 20, or September 2021. Yeah, 2021. Wow. Yeah. And, and I mean like- what would you say Dagny's is? I I think I put on my website like Simple Food Elevated. Um, 
I, I wouldn't say it's a technically a specific, like, um, I just tell everyone like a small breakfast and lunch eatery. Like when people are at a restaurant, they think very big, all these seating, that's a, it's not, it's a very small space. Um, we do breakfast and lunch, but there's no, like, it's not necessarily Italian, which I am, but it's not, it's kind of like easy food, just a little bit better. Yeah. That's how I say it. Like some people think it's fancy. It's not at all. Um, I think just cause the ingredients are listed. Sometimes people think it's more fancy. Yeah. So like all the sandwiches are normal sandwiches, but I make all the sauces. So like, that's like fancy, but it's not. Yeah. Really. You, you elevate it. Yeah. But you, like, I don't like, you would say what cuisine it is. I mean, I've made like, um, tandoori chicken. I've made hibachi. Like I've made different things that I couldn't say it's an exact, um, yeah, like one should, thing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, cuz I was trying to think like how would you how would you describe to someone like like at work I was leaving work today mm-hmm. and uh, my guy at work was like who are you interviewing tonight? And I said uh, you know, she owns a food spot and yeah. I was trying to think of a way to like describe way. it because it's not really like would you can would you say I wouldn't say it was a, a restaurant necessarily. No. I would say it's a restaurant on paper like we're filling out forms. Yeah. That's what but when I meet someone that I don't know, I'm always just like, I have a small breakfast, lunch, little eatery in Carnegie. Yeah. That's kind of how I word it. Um, Grab and go. Yeah. Because restaurant people just think big restaurant. It's not a bar. Um, it's not a diner. Yeah. So when I started and I was like trying to think of a name, I had to think of something that like described what a, what Dagny was. Cause at first it was just Dagny's. Yeah. And nobody knows what that is. Like I get that question all the time. Like, what's that? Who's that? Um, so I had to put like an eatery or a kitchen or a, some sort of food. So when, if you didn't know what Dagny's was, you'd say, Oh, an eatery that should be food. Yeah. Some explanation yeah. on it. Yeah. It's, it's like a weird thing to describe. Cause I do get people saying like, I thought this was a real restaurant. And I'm like, it's hard. It's a hard thing to say. It's just, it's a grab and go. It's a very small spot. So. Yeah. Because if you describe mm-hmm. it, if you, and you say it's a restaurant, people might, you know, yes. get the wrong idea and think like, Oh, there's tables, there's seating there. 100%, yes. How many people like realistically, how many people could sit in there? Um, Two, four, six, eight. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's, you know, you could good. have your sandwich there, have your, right. have your roll there, but it's like, you know, you wouldn't bring your whole family down. That's yeah. what I say. Like on Sunday morning, you wouldn't bring your whole family cause you probably all wouldn't fit there. So if you work down and it's just you and a coworker, that's like perfect for you. Something that like, you probably wouldn't take someone on a date there. Yeah. It's a breakfast and lunch place. You might, but it's very small that it's very intimate. So we're probably all in your business. I mean, it's like, almost like a bodega vibe. Yeah, you know, that. you I'll could go that. in there and there's yeah. like different hot foods. You know, I was trying to think that's the best way. I think that I kind of, uh, you know, made that bridge. It's like, mm-hmm. it's kind of like a bodega vibe. You got a, a, a fridge with a bunch of ready-made food in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know, it's just an interesting, you know, template that you have. So, so September, 2021, you opened this up. Yes. I mean, your life before this, you know, I don't really know anything about you. <laughs> Yeah. I, I mean, a lot of people don't. A lot of people think that I have some food background, so I don't at all. Um, I You grew up in Pittsburgh? I did. So I grew up, I went to Montour okay. basically my whole life. Um, I moved my senior year, so I went to Mars for one year. But I've always been around the Pittsburgh area. So I go in Kraft and Carnegie, Kennedy Robinson, Stowe. I've always been in the west end of the Pittsburgh area. Yeah. So I've never moved out. I've always stayed here. Um, what were you like growing up? Like, what are you into? I played softball. I, um, I threw a track. Um, I was a little smart ass when I was younger. Yeah. Like, so, um, I mean, I got good grades in school. I didn't study, but I wasn't some, I wasn't, um, in like AP classes. I just got normal classes, normal grades. I've worked since I was 14. Like my first job was at a bakery. Um, it was called Carnes Bakery. Actually. Where was that? That was, it's across from Brewster's where Brewster's was. I think it's Pepperoni's now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Robinson. yeah. 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 So it was, but I was 14 was like my first real job. Um, what kind of bakery was it? Donuts, cupcakes, cookies, things like that. Oh, like, like people would come in. It yeah. wasn't like a wholesale bakery. No, it was like, it was this older, um, I want to say she was Italian. Yeah. But it was like an older, like grandma, older women there. Um, and I think we had a few of us younger ki- kids that were working there. Yeah. And so I remember like, <laughs> this is so weird, but I remember her saying like, giving me a compliment on my work ethic. Cause at 14, like, she was just an older Italian woman. She was mm-hmm. scary. She didn't seem friendly. Like now as an adult, I kind of know what an older Italian woman is like, but I was more scared of her then. Um, and she gave me a compliment like on my work ethic. And I was like, yes, I'm in with her. Like I'm good. Well, where does the work ethic come from? Like why did like, like why you get a job when you're 14? I have always worked. Yeah. So um, growing up, my dad had some investment 
properties and things. So like just basically grunt work, weeding things, cleaning out things. I've always worked. Um, my parents were self-employed. So work was like work and homework, kind of the same thing. Yeah. Um, so at that point I wanted to get an actual job, not like working with your parents isn't really an actual job. That's what kids think. Ugh. I've known, I find that out now. Um, Worked with my dad my whole life. Right. And it's different <laughs> right. than, it's, you know. It's different. There is no quitting. There is no calling off. hundred percent. No, there's no end of the day. Like <laughs> It's a funny, it's yeah. a funny relationship. Yeah. You know, you're kind of just a gopher. Yeah. It's, it's hard. Like Grunt work, like you said. Right. You can't just leave and you can't just be like F you basically yeah. like at the end of the day. Um, and so I think that's just what like kids, when we were 14, that's what kids did. Like you are 14, 15, 16, you got work permits. That was a big thing. Um, I was going to say, is it legal to work when you're 14? I, I mean, this was a long time ago. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> and I don't right. know if it was like, I don't remember the technicalities. Um, so my first job was like at 14. And then by the time I got 16, I was at Giant Eagle and like, but I've always, I've always just worked my ass off. So I've yeah. always took overtime. I've always worked as much as I could as a kid, like within the hours that you were allowed to and everything. Yeah. And when you're a kid, you get like a hundred dollar paycheck. It's like so much money. Yeah. Life changing. You don't any bills. Like, so what else did I have to do? So I've always been like that. Um, that's in uh, that. That's like a time in life whenever you're a young kid and you get that first real paycheck yeah. and you're like, Whoa, this is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't really have bills. Like I probably paid my cell phone bill or something like that. And at that time it was probably 50 bucks. And you're doing all this on top of sports on top mm. of school. Yeah. And, and I mean, like, what else are your hobbies besides sports and school? Like, what other things do you like? So I've always been somewhat, like, of a nerd. I really like to read. Um, I've always liked to cook. I've always just, my family always, a lot of them have always been cooking. So whether it was my nana or my aunts or whoever, I've always seen someone cooking and was in the kitchen some sort of way. Yeah. So I remember, like, once when I was a kid, I was in trouble because I <laughs> I just had like a smart mouth. So I used to get in trouble a lot. We'll say that. Um, and I made these like granola bars to get out of punishment. I don't know how it worked, but like I probably might've been like 12 years old. So yeah. I don't know what the punishment was, but I was like, if I make these granola bars and you like them, like, can I get off punishment tomorrow? <laughs> in hindsight, like my punishment probably was already done yeah. and I just made them. But um, I just, we were kids. We also like just played outside all the time. So like one of my best friends lived in walking distance, like under a mile, we would just meet each other and like walk in the woods for just hours. And like, we would try to try to like build these tree houses. Yeah. <laughs> like, I swear to God, so I did the same like, exact things. But, like you just didn't know, like even equipment, like I would just, Oh, there's a branch on the ground, grab the branch. You should just nail this into a tree, like yeah. no foundation, just fun stuff. Um, well, we didn't have like phones as no. a young kid. So right. that's, what's different. Yeah. So we had, um, we had like, in one of my houses, when we were younger, we had, I mean, one of them in Robinson. Like, we didn't have multiple houses. I don't yeah. know that. Um, but we had, like, a pool. We had a trampoline. We had a hot tub. We had, like, a zip line. We had a big yard. Yeah. So a lot of kids came to our house. And it was just, that's what you did. You just played outside all day. Um, yeah. There wasn't very many little, like, what they do now. You know, yeah, so it's, it's weird. Different. You don't really see, to, like, uh I, we have Halloween here. We never get a trick-or-treater. Mm -hmm. Granted, I kind of live on a cliff. Yeah. But... Uh, the only time I ever see kids in this entire neighborhood is I'll see them at the bus stop in the morning and there's like probably 10 of them and I've never, ever seen them it's weird. riding a bike, yeah. walking. Uh, and it's, I don't know, I feel like whenever we're, I was younger, I would just go walk around the neighborhood with my yeah. friends. We would pour our money together and go buy like a, you know, a half gallon of tea and like a sand yeah. pepperoni <laughs> rolls or some shit yeah. and go in the woods, like that you said, like and fun. build things. Right. Just uh, stay there all day. It's weird to think about that though. Yeah. Well, you know, as you're going through school, you said you get decent grades. Like what is your idea of what you want to do, you know, beyond school? When I was younger, I wanted to be a hairstylist. Really? Yes. I don't know. I wanted to be a hairstylist. I don't know where that came from. Yeah. But that was like, a second I wanted to do that were you like were you like real into your hair and makeup and everything like no. that um, okay so when I was in high school I I don't know how to put on makeup like and when I was in high school I put all of it on like everything there is I was like put it all on I don't <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not saying I look like a clown but um as I grew older I figured out like how to actually do my hair how to like come into my hair and figure it because it's a lot of hair I have so I had to figure it out um and so I was never like into the beauty side of things. Yeah. Um, I don't know enough about that. It was, wasn't that interesting to me. Now I was like, now as I'm an adult, I put on mascara and call it a day. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to be a hairstylist probably because it looked fun. 
Like probably. It's understandable. Yeah. Like not realizing the schooling you would have to go to. I think people look at like the fun part of everything. Yeah. Not like you have to get the fundamentals. You have to go to school for years before you're even have a salon or working in a salon or something like that. Yeah. It's definitely a, uh, it's definitely a, a journey. Yeah. So, I mean, going through school, what happens after school? Like, when does that kind of not, did, I mean, did you ever go for hair? No, no, okay. No, I went to, um, I went to Slipper Rock for business management because that was like an oak kind of whoever could take it. It wasn't yeah. like really drilled into anything. It was um, like a default yeah. uh, major. Right. Exactly. Like it was like a little bit above general studies. Like, oh, I picked something, but. How do you choose Slippery Rock? So one of my best friends was going there. Yeah. That's literally why I went there. And I like which is horrible in hindsight. I just followed one of my girlfriends. I mean, that's usually how it is. We had, I mean, we, we had Cal U there was Mm -hmm. like the 13th grade and Cal U. And then I went to slippery rock Mm -hmm. for a year because like a bunch of other kids from my school went there. It was either like Cal U slippery rock or IUP. Yeah. Uh, And there was like a couple people that like, you know, dribbled down to like West Virginia, but Mm -hmm. like, yeah, slippery rock. Did you stay there for all four years? I went for a year and a half. Yeah. Um, so I've never really, st- like I wasn't really a studious kid because I just got good enough grades to go get by in high school. Well, college is completely different. Um, and I learned that very quickly. Like I failed out. Yeah. I My GPA was probably one something. Yeah. Because um, you only get four tests or something. So you fail one of them. It's really hard. Um, you know, they don't care about you. Like, it's not like high school. No yeah. I, I couldn't be up. in lecture classes. That's yes. what it really was. You know, a big auditorium and you're like just having to take notes through yeah. PowerPoints. Not a chance. No, it's hard. Like, they don't know if you're there. You can show up. You cannot show up. Yeah. Um, and so I would always pick the later classes, um, thinking I could sleep in. This is great. My two roommates would be done at, like, noon, and they'd come back, and I'm going to class. I'm like, this sucks. Like, yeah. Like, you just had all this freedom you just didn't know, like, as, a, as any college kid. Um, and so I was there for a year and a half. I just... I just didn't do good, whatever. Yeah. So some at some point along the lines, I wanted to open a restaurant. It's like I bought the, like, book, like, um, you know, how to open a restaurant for dummies. <laughs> like, so stupid. You're cooking at this time? No. Like, just, I just wanted to do this. So, like, I still was cooking in my house and stuff. Or yeah. just for fun. But nothing, like, nothing serious. Um, I don't know where I got it in my head. I was 19 at the time. So, I probably knew everything in the world, I'm sure. So, I... Um, basically told my dad that I wanted to drop out of college. I was like, I want to start a restaurant. I want to drop out of college. Um, so on the flip side of that, like I said, working for your parent, your parent only really wants you to work for them. So like the agreement was that I could drop out of college. We would look for a building and try to figure this out. That kind of was as far as that went. I basically started back to working for him. And um, so that didn't really work out very well. Um, <laughs> so I was probably about 20 ish. And I, so at this point I lived in like the Mon Valley in Manesson. Um, <clears throat> cause that's where my family lives. So what ended up happening is my Nana ended up getting sick. So we moved up there to kind of try to help her and everything. She just never came out of the hospital. So we moved into her house. Um, and so at this point I dropped out of college, I came back and I was just getting into the wrong things. I was just hanging with the wrong crowds. Um, being in the wrong places, not, mm-hmm. not being, not, not doing what being I should do. Being young and wild yes. and free. <laughs> yes. That's yes. what it is. Exactly. So, um, so that happened. So I had my, I got pregnant at 22. So then, but that point I moved down here, um, where I was in the process of moving down here. So I had to get like a real job at this point because I wasn't working or anything. I was kind of just living off credit cards. Yeah. And that's making you grow up quick. Right. Like I was like, cool, this is great. Like living it up until the bill came. I'm like, oh, I don't have a job. I don't. So it was, it was like a hard lesson for sure. Um, so then I got a job at PNC down here. So I was traveling like from Manesson to Pittsburgh every day and on a bus, which if you've ever taken a bus from that far, it's, I mean, it's a trip. Deep. Yes. It's like, it's it's a, a two voyage. or three hour trip. Yeah, yes. that's crazy. Um, yeah. And so I eventually moved down here. Um, I had some friends that lived in an apartment building. And so I just moved in across from them, which was nice. Yeah. So I had to keep a real job because at this point I had a kid. Is it just like, you know, you chose PNC because it's like, you know, uh, a semi serious, mm-hmm. serious in air quotes job where you could like, you know, build a career without a major that has anything to do yeah. with it? Um, now that I'm saying this <clears throat> again, so one of my... <laughs> One of my other best friends was working there. That sounds so horrible. I'm just following all my friends around. So one of my girlfriends was working there. Um, 
And she was like, look, you can get in the door. You don't have a degree, but you can get in in like a collections position. I'm like, cool, whatever. Yeah. Like, I just, I need something to do at this point. Um, So like it worked, it, you know, you got good insurance, you had a steady job. It's a good place um, to work. Yeah. And so, and some people stay there forever. Some people move up. I always say like, I don't have a finance background and I know some people get it. I don't. So like, it takes me a while to get it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is hard. Like it's hard when you're working with people that know what you're doing and you're yeah. just not getting it. Um, so I've traveled through PNC. I was in collections. I was an underwriter. I was in asset management. Um, so I was kind of all over, but not really, not really climbing up a ladder. Yeah. Really. You're um, just like m- maintaining. Yeah. 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 And so like, but having a kid, I kind of, again, had to, you just had to keep that. It was just, it was just too hard her being so young, trying to find a different, um, job and then daycare and all the things that come with having a kid young. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, how long did you end up staying there? 13 years, 13, <laughs> 13 years. years of not liking it. You just <laughs> like, walked in the door and yes. you stayed there for 13 yes. years. And so like, I never, I always enjoyed some of the people. Um, I'd say out of all my positions, underwriting was probably my favorite. Cause you kind of were like somewhat of an investigator. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was just never my thing. Like I know some people love banking, love finance. I don't, I don't really care about it. Yeah. I know that sounds horrible to say. And like, and I know what I was saying earlier about like my work ethic, that doesn't make me feel good too. Do you think that that sounds horrible own. though? Because realistically, like, you know, the big people at PNC, mm-hmm. they definitely know that the small people at PNC don't give a fuck. Yeah. And they're just like <laughs> yes. working there to get a paycheck. Right. And it's just very, a yeah. Very mm-hmm. rarely is there someone that's like, Oh boy, right. <laughs> let's figure this out. Yeah. And you're like, you know, I, I honestly don't know. I would want to interview that person, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, that's uh, thing, just be, I, actually, I could probably interview my mom. My yeah. mom was there for like 35 mm-hmm. years. Loved it. Uh, Absolutely see? See? loved it. Yeah. And it's crazy to me because I just couldn't do it. Like mm-hmm. I grew up listening to, her work calls, bring your kid to work yeah. day, all <laughs> yes. that shit, like that culture. Uh, and that's fine. And I get it. Mm-hmm. And that's great for people that want to do it. But mm-hmm. it's just like an easy place to like maintain. You know, yes, you get exactly a paycheck there, you could work there, mm-hmm. you could get trained and you're just a piece and a big piece of machinery. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. And that's okay for some people. Yeah. That is okay for some people. Yeah. But a raise isn't that good for me to just be okay with this either. A thousand percent. Like, and you're not wrong to say like, oh, it's terrible for me to say that like, <laughs> I just didn't care about it because in like. In hindsight, I could say it now. I probably never said it to a manager. Well, for you know, sure. For sure. You're right. But that manager yeah. should know. Yeah. They, they got to know. Yeah. I mean, when you give some like a $500 raise for the year and I'm like, I can I just get the 500 at one time? Yeah, Please like, just don't on, break now. it in paychecks. And they're like, <laughs> we're going to give you and like slide it uh, over. And I'm like. You don't have to slide. It's $500 or a thousand. And so it wasn't anything that like. You're getting I, crumbs. Right. Like I have friends that are getting bonuses of like tens of thousands. Of I dollars. know. It's insane. And it's a big thing. Like I have my big bonus. I'm like, okay, cool. What Never do you mean? That. Like, and I'm like, yeah, we got a meeting. We have a Skype meeting. I don't know what it's about. Like, uh, I just meet it all. Met all expectations. And you worked there whenever there was no remote work. It was, it wasn't like it is now. So yeah. it was more um, like a case by case basis. And this okay. is when people really weren't working at home. Yeah. Um, so like, for example, when I would get like my car serviced, I would just take my computer, my laptop and like just sign on at the dealership. Okay. Um, but like some people are like, oh, I don't know about that. I don't know if you could work. And I'm like, I'm sitting there for four hours. I just yeah. I can't do anything else. But it wasn't a, it wasn't as acceptable as it is now. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Why do you have to, do you have to work? Can you come in after? And it was just a pain in the ass at that time well Um, the reason i ask that is like you said you had your kid so mm -hmm. you know you have a kid in this 13 years of you working there Mm -hmm. uh like what is your life besides just working there and being a mother um that's pretty much it it. yeah Yeah, that's pretty much it i would say i would say um yes um being a mom's a very big job um and i do it by myself so that is it takes a lot of my time so you work eight to five whatever it may be you come home. So my daughter would go to daycare. We'd wake up, we'd get on the bus, we'd drop, or we, i drop her off um, at daycare, go to work, come back, get back on the bus. So when she was younger, like I could throw her in a book bag on my back, you know, and then we would walk or stroll or whatever it may be. Um, and so since she's been probably six, she's played softball. So we'll mm. say that anything I could volunteer, get her in, we've done. Yeah. And I've coached everything she's joined, whether she's liked it or not. So like we've done the basketball, the softball, um, school activities, things like that. So it was basically work all day, mom all night, repeat, rinse and repeat, 
And then the, the weekends, doing life. all kinds of volunteer, whatever yeah. you can do. So, like, the weekends, like, when I worked at PNC, again, if they had overtime, I would always take it. Um, she's definitely come to work with me before. Definitely been five or six under the desk with a book or some Barbies or something like that. Um, or we'd come in, like, later on the weekend where it wasn't, I mean, I wasn't in trouble for bringing her in. But I also didn't want to, like, show it off to people yeah, either. Yeah. I was trying to sneak a five-year-old in. <laughs> like, she knew the guard and stuff at that point. And it wasn't a big deal. She was a well-behaved kid. Um and so on the weekends, we would just try to do mother-daughter things, you know, whatever you do. Go to the zoo, go to the park, play. Yeah, you're just making it whatever, happen. Whatever five, six, however old she was at the time, wanted to do. Jesus. Yeah. So it's um, it's just like, like I say, it's just like Groundhog Day. How old now? <laughs> Literally, uh, 15 and a half. 15 and a half. So, yes, I mean, sir. you're doing all this by yourself yes, and you're sir. working, you're, <laughs> that's just, I get this all the time. Yeah. I don't even have kids and I, you know, I have Antoinette and I'm mm. thankful for that. And we only have a dog and I almost feel overwhelmed with that. Yes. So I can't even imagine what, you know, was it all a blur? Would you say? Um, I just, I just do it. Yeah. I get that question a lot. Like, how do you, like between a mother and a business and like, how do you do it? And I always like joke, like if I actually ever sat down and really, really thought about it, I probably would have some thoughts about it, but yeah. I just don't. Um, I'm a mom. So that's my, I don't have another choice except to be a good mom. Yeah. Um, so I don't get to think, how do I, ha- how can I do this? It just gets done. If I want my business to succeed, it just gets done. It has to. Um, so I'm not saying I never fail or I'm never wrong at things, but like me thinking, how am I going to do this somehow? It just works. Somehow I get it done, whatever it may be. Um, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. I don't that's, know what to say. That's like, awesome. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, it's awesome. You just make it happen like that. It's probably exhausting, but it's, yes. you know, so <laughs> when does that, when does it kind of shift in your mind that you want to like leave this like cushy job with like a steady paycheck mm-hmm. benefits, everything like that to yes. opening a restaurant? So I would say, I want to say, I found some paperwork. I want to say it's around 2018. I started, um, going into like farmer's markets and getting like an actual like um, LLC and a tax ID number and everything like that. So I think it started with me making pumpkin rolls and I would, any food, any work um, event, I would always bring in food. Like I always was like pride in myself in making and bringing food versus you bringing in your Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Um, cool. Absolute garbage. I'm going to win every time. Um, yeah. So like, and I like to pride in that. Um, so I'd like make pumpkin rolls and that's kind of like how it started a little bit. I would say I'd make them, I'd bring them to work and then people would, Oh, can I buy them? Oh, it's for the holiday and things like that. Uh, so I was like, all right, let me start farmer's markets. It's easy, not easy, but you can, um, there's not a lot of overhead. Yeah. Right. right. So I found a commercial kitchen, which ended up being <clears throat> right in Carnegie actually. And I would do desserts and everything like that. So like commercial kitchens, they all work differently. This one, it was by the hour. So I don't know any of this as I'm going in. So I'm like, okay, the, the rolls take an hour to hour to make. So I'll get the kitchen for two hours. Well, the two hours includes like you mixing all your stuff, you baking it, it cooling, you packing it up, you doing the dishes, you cleaning. It goes mm. really, really fast. Yeah. And so like there was times I've rented a kitchen and like carrying out hot desserts out of it. Cause I'm like, Oh, my time's done. I got to go. Um, Jeez. Yeah. So I would get in the farmer's market. So that's kind of where that started. Um, and it was easy. So I did desserts and everything. But then I learned that in the summertime it's hot and desserts melt and they're ugly. And so I'm just this girl that like (laughs) people don't know. And I'm like, Hey, I have stuff in a cooler. If you want anything in a cooler, but like, I don't have really name for myself. I don't have any, what were you going by? So I went from, um, Dolcezza Dagny. So that actually meant like sweet Dagny, like sweet and Italian. Um, one of my cousins, we like, we have this cousins group chat. So I'm always like firing off ideas and all of us are love that. And so we came up with this. And then again, that was like, Right. No one knows how to say this at all. This is like 2018, 2019. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and whenever you, you know, whenever you started making these for work and people started like trying to say like, yo, could I get these for the holidays? Mm-hmm. Like what, what is like that, that line where people, where it made you think like, you know, I need to do this. Like how many were you making at that time? It wasn't a lot at all. I yeah. mean, I want to say that, um, I mean, it could have been 10. Yeah. 20. yeah, yeah. Like, to me, that was so much like 20. I was like, oh my gosh. Like, yeah, for 20, sure. Like, things of cream cheese. Now I'm like, that's what, that's nothing at all. <laughs> like that's, that's great. Um, but, uh, so I, where do your skills come from with all this? Like, I mean, I know just practicing like just, but I mean like, was anyone ever teaching you this no. or, or you're just like, you know, you're yeah. someone online that's just making recipes. Yeah. I, um, my family's more savory than sweets. Like, okay. My family's not a big dessert family. Yeah. Um, but so they've always been making sauces and 
pastas and things like that. So I've always just seen that growing up. Um, and I think I just like took, took it through, took it on like yeah. just from watching it and everything. Um, just from being a kid and probably or trying to sneak over and eat some of it or something like that. But I've never had a lesson or like, this is exactly what you do. It's kind of like when you grow up and you're like being taught laundry, like just like, okay, we separate the colors and yeah. then we put the soap. And I think that's kind of how I learned. Okay. And I think I just enjoyed it that I did it. But like when I went to college, I think I cooked one meal the whole college and I'm really, like, which is so odd. But um, were you eating <clears throat> Kafara's pizza up there? <laughs> ginger Hill. <laughs> we were uh, ginger, When I went there, it was dry. The whole, the campus, it was a dry campus. Really? Yes. Jesus. So like, we had like. That's um, why I left mainly because yeah. all that we, all you could do up there was drink yeah, and I didn't no. drink at all. Yeah. You could not. Um, I mean, you could you yeah. know, as a college kid, but not really. Um, so, you know, we had like the, the, the cards, the meal cards or whatever. And yeah. Like, we were college kids. We wanted to go to the cafeteria and see people watching who's there and what boys are there and like Get the things college like that. experience. Right. So like, I didn't want to cook. And I think I literally cooked one time, which in hindsight is so funny because my roommate said that to me. They're like, why didn't you ever cook for us? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, no well, clue. it's crazy because I asked <laughs> you about like the pumpkin rolls and everything like that because there are beasts to make. Like, it's mm-hmm. not like something that is like my mother-in-law taught me. Because, uh, I, I, I don't know, I'm just interested in like learning the old ways of doing things. Yeah. She makes a banger of a pumpkin roll. Mm-hmm. So I was like, we got to learn this. And then I tried to make it the next year for Christmas for everyone and uh, messed them all up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> though the... The, the towels that I had to roll the cake mm-hmm. up into, I don't know why, but like fibers were coming oh, off yeah. into the cakes. Yeah, and I'm like, learn, for sure. come on now. Hers, yeah. hers, her, her like rags that she wipes mm-hmm. it, that she rolls these up in, they're probably like 30 years I, old. I work fine. Yeah. And, uh, but like, it's a process. So like, mm-hmm. you know, for you to develop like a recipe that people like is, you know, kind of speaks to, yeah. to I your skills. Say, like more sweet stuff. I start with someone, a recipe, like whether it's, um, I usually look up things or, and so I also have a pastry chef in our family. So as far as saying we don't really do desserts, um, my cousin's stepmother is a pastry chef. So okay. she's like, she's a great person to help me if I need help with like the technicalities of things. Yeah. But savory food, in my opinion, there's really no measuring. Like I could do that blindfolded. Baking is more of a science. So yeah. I start with like a base and then I like adjust it. Like, okay, that didn't work. We'll do this certain things you could adjust more than not. Um, so like if you're making a cream cheese ice and you want to change the flavor, it's not that crazy versus if you're making bread, you have to use right. the exact measurements exactly. and everything. Yes. Um, so it's just a lot of mistakes though. I'll be honest. It's a lot of mistakes. So it's like one of them, like when I, when my daughter was a cheerleader a few years ago and I made these cupcakes to bring to the girls and you know, they're cute and they're colored and all this stuff. So I'm sitting there and the little girl's like, these days like butter like the icing and I looked at her I was like forgot the vanilla I'm sorry like, and I'm just like so excited all these little girls are yeah. laughing I'm like she's just eating wet butter yeah <laughs> like, but like I learned the lesson yeah very easily. you'll never forget like, that again never forget that again yeah so so you you get this commercial kitchen you're working in there you obviously find out that that isn't going to be sustainable yes uh how long were you in there probably like Maybe like a year or two. Not oh, straight, really that not long? Not straight. But, but like, like in and out of there? In like farmer market, farmer's market season or maybe like around Thanksgiving or holiday season. So it wasn't all year because f- most farmer's markets are in the summertime. Yeah. Um. So maybe it was like June to August or something like that. But and like how much are you bringing to farmer's markets? Is it just like a small select little would, bit? I would do always in slices. So like I might take one or two full rolls. But yeah, it but was slice like, it, it usually out. usually slices. Okay. Um, you also kind of make more money that way, slicing yeah, it out. Um, for sure. But people don't want to spend, like at that time, I think I might charge $10 a roll. People didn't want to spend $10 a roll. That's like, crazy. So you'd have like two slices for five bucks. Good or something pumpkin like roll, that. go for yeah. a crazy amount of money. Right, right. But I'll pay crazy that, money right? for a good pumpkin roll. <laughs> right. And so like, then I was like, okay, if I have samples, then more people will buy them. Because again, like I said, nobody knew who I was. So I'm just this girl, like... I mean, I talk to people and stuff. But Did you get a warm welcome as a yes. uh, new baker? Yes. I would say, but I'm very talkative. I'm very friendly with people that like. <laughs> they have I, no I choice. I don't really know how you <laughs> wouldn't like me. But like, I also help people and they would help me. Like, people help you set up your tents. It's like kind of a farmer's mark, like unspoken thing. Yeah. I don't know if they all do it, but like, I would be getting stuff out of my car and they would help me set up my tent or like wrap my stuff up and like vice versa. So it's, it's a good community. A lot of the farmers markets are the same people. Yeah. Like you see the same people year after year. So there's people that still 
or the Carnegie Farmers Market that I started with five years ago. I love which that. Which is kind of like cool to see how far we've come. Nothing I love more than the whole, you know, uh, tr- like that whole like, you know, act of like going to a flea market, a farmer's mm-hmm. market, and just like, you know, the the the, the, the exchange between someone. Yeah. People make this shit with their hands. Yes. You know it's going to be good. They're passionate about mm-hmm. it. They just, you ask them a question about it, they just want to answer yeah, it. They love it. They're yeah, like it's so like excited. you're asking about your work. I love that. Yeah. That's a, I don't know. It's, it's terrible because, uh, it's hard because like you said, people back then didn't want to spend, you know, X amount on whatever, but I don't know. I talked to Brown bear about this as well. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to go there and you're going to buy a loaf of sourdough. That's a handmade loaf of sourdough and you're going to spend your money on it, you know, whatever it is, or you could go to the terrible monopolized giant eagle right uh and you could buy some of their shit but it's like yeah it's easy i don't know we talked about like the younger generation kind of being like more acceptable to wanting to you know spend the extra money on a better product rather than like you know the Mm -hmm. poverty mindset parents that we have that's like you know cheap you know Mm -hmm. uh, the quality is different you're getting what you pay for a million percent that's what it is i'm okay with that i would rather spend eight dollars on a loaf of bread than two or four yeah i've also bought cheap stuff so like as as growing up and being a young mother and stuff like that things always weren't the easiest i'll say that yeah like, this definitely was a paycheck to paycheck robbing peter to paul things like that um so like did i always buy the the best quality of things and i mean for my personal house not business wise um, yeah, for sure. And you yeah. know the difference. You've also bought hot dogs that were a dollar. Yeah. You know what hot dogs yeah. are Sometimes we were getting like. the spaghetti rings instead <laughs> right. of the spaghetti O's. Right. You know what I so mean? So like, you know, but I think that, I think a lot of people like they notice, and I think the young people too, um, they see like the work you put into it. Not all young people. And I'm not saying older people don't, Yeah, but I, you know, I get that. Well, how is this this much? How is this this much? And most of the people you talk to, that's as far as that sentence goes. Yeah. So they don't like, it, how much should it be? Like, that's almost like what you said. How much would you pay for this? Oh, I don't know. Okay, well, how can we continue this conversation? How yeah. much do you think a loaf of bread should be? How much do you think a breakfast sandwich would be? Like, so I get it. People can spend seven, ten $10 for a cup of coffee. I get that. But you're also getting a different milk, a syrup, a foam, a whip, a, a cup, a lid, things like that. Yeah. Um, so I think like at farmer's market, sometimes people see the actual like maker and appreciate it more. But there's also people that come up who's like, oh gosh, I would never pay that. I don't know why you would say that to someone's face, but you know. It's all right, you, move along. Do you? And like, and so I've learned. Don't be taking out of my right, samples right, either. Beat it, right. Well, because people do want the samples. Like, I know. People always, you got free samples? And I'm like, going to buy anything? What do you want? So, um, I mean, two years of you like working at this and going through the farmer's markets and kind of like refining your, your system and mm-hmm. how you do things. I think it's interesting to hear that you said in the beginning, you were more desserts, but then in the summertime, obviously they're not as, you know, they perish a little bit yes. quicker. Yes. So how do you navigate from, you know, things that, that withstand the heat a little bit more? So it started with, it was, um, I think we did palm curls, cupcakes, lemon squares, lady locks, but again, they all melt. Um, so after a little bit of time, in the farmer's market, it's usually the same people that come up every year, or every month, like people are excited about a farmer's market. So I'd see the same people yearly too. So now after you try, you'd be like, oh, you again. Oh, okay, you again. So, like, mm-hmm. it got a little bit easier. But, like, I'd be so excited. I made $300 at a farmer's market. So excited. Yeah. Like, I was like, this is killing it. Like, but I also spent however much at the kitchen, however much on supplies. So, like, in the end of it, did I make 50 bucks? Probably. Yeah. That was it. And then I, I would be there for, because you're usually there for four hours. You're up there earlier to set up, to take down. Um, So, what ended up happening was basically... It was just desserts. Yeah, I did desserts until, so I got a different position at PNC. This is what kind of when COVID came around. We were all at home at this point. Um, And when I was getting, when I finally got this, the building I'm in now, I tried to like put some of my menu items out. I was like, oh, I'll do like a salad and a sandwich and quiche. Again, wait, 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 wait. You, you just brush over that. How do you come across <laughs> the building that you're in now? Okay, so I, we were all working at home. My kid was working at home. Everyone's at home, school work everything yeah so this is my last position at pnc which i just absolutely hated i just hated it you could see it on my face every day 
I like joke that I like, I like cried every day because I was so frustrated. Like I wasn't crying because I was sad. I just was so frustrated. And like I said earlier, like I didn't get it. And so we're all at home. I can't sit next to you and you tell me. And everyone's like pulled in all these directions. So it's, it's hard to like get help for me. I'll say that um, at that point. So throughout being in farmer's markets for years, I've always said to people like, I'm always looking for a brick and mortar. Always like it's, I've always just said that. And I'm always yeah. like, if you ever see it, just kind of like in passing, Putting it out there. kind of serious. Um, so the meter lady actually told somebody that told me, and they're like, what about this space in Carnegie? So I look it up online. I'm like, looks too small. It's not going to work. Cause you've been in there. It looks like just the skinny part of it. You don't see the back or yeah. the side, which is still small, but it, I was like, it's way too skinny. Like it's, I can't fit anything. In well, here. what was your mindset on what you wanted? Did you eventually want like a full, like sit down restaurant? Like people would I think, I think originally I did until okay. I actually started physically working in there. Yeah. And so for, to have a full restaurant, you need a full team of people. I don't have that. So I don't have a partner that like, I don't have a group of friends that wanted to start a restaurant. So it's not like there's four of us and we could all do it together. So I had to think, okay, well, it's just me. Um, when they showed me this place, I was like, this is small enough that I could do this by myself. And so nobody was sitting down at that time. It still was at the end of COVID. We had the sh- shields up. No one was sitting in restaurants. So I was like, that's easy. Not easy, but it's, this is a good spot for me to yeah. start off. It's somewhere. easier than having Correct. a whole team. I don't have to team. hire anyone. I don't know about hiring. I don't know what to pay. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Um, so I actually wrote the landlord a letter and like described to him who I was and what I wanted to do there and everything like that. Um, I'm like a big believer in like letters and stuff like old school letters. That's the best way to do it. That's yeah. what, that's what got us our house. See, see, see? got to do it. Yeah. So like I did that. Um, and, I looked at it. So my uncle's a realtor. My aunt and uncle came down to help me. Um, so they're talking and it's funny because my uncle's Danish. The guy that owns the building is Ukrainian. So like, okay. they're just like two guys in the back loud as hell. I don't know what either of them are saying. I don't know <laughs> if they know what they're saying, but like, I was like, you guys got it. Good. Good. Yeah. Deal. Like by the end of like our, our tour and our walk around, he basically was like, all right, you can what was that building. place? It was a Ukrainian deli. Or international deli. Oh, okay. Um, so I don't know. I don't think it was just Ukrainian, but they had international meats and cheeses and everything like that. Was it shut down for a while before you got in there? Yes. So I think the owners just got older. Yeah. Um, I know they used to travel a lot for like the products and stuff. So I think they just got older and didn't want to do it anymore. So okay. I think it was vacant for a few years from what I understand. Um, I never saw it before I looked into it for some reason. <clears throat> like I lived in Carnegie, but for some reason I don't remember before I had a business in Carnegie, if that makes sense. I don't yeah, remember never seeing really do. it, like not paying attention. Um, but it was nice because it had some food stuff in it. Like they left a sink or two, a cooler. Um, they had a mop room already built out. So again, I didn't know you needed all that stuff. Once I got in there, I was like, okay, this is great. I don't have to build a mop room because then you need permits. Then you need a contractor. Mm-hmm. It's another step and it's more money basically. Um, so we got in there in March of 2021. So thinking again, not knowing what you're doing, I'm like, cool. Yeah, we'll open soon. Like my aunt's like, you're open in two months. I'm like, mm, I don't know, but probably like think not realizing how much work yeah. and permits in Allegheny County and all these permits. A pain. Such a pain. Like, and so the, I found out in hindsight, you could, I guess you could hire somebody. I want to say they're a consultant that if you want to open a restaurant, they'll basically do all the work for you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, get your blueprints, Put your forms in. They also probably money. big money though. Right. So again, starting off, I'm like, we're not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm like turning everything in and you almost don't know you're wrong until you're wrong. Like, it's not like, Hey, here's your checklist and you're wrong here, here and here. It's like, let me do an inspection and tell you you're wrong. And then I have to schedule you for another inspection to tell you you're wrong again or right or whatever it may be. Um, so it was six months. We opened in September. So yeah, it was about six months. So in that process, um, I've gotten some used equipment, some new equipment. I knew some like restaurant people that they had just some tables and that press and things like that that I took off their hands. Um, but I went to a used like um, equipment place. I got a refrigerator, things like that. But even something is like not knowing, like I didn't even measure the refrigerator. The guy like showed up to d- deliver and I'm like, shit, this isn't going to fit in the door. Like, and it did, but it, I mean, it did with like four yeah. inches to spare. <laughs> And so like, he's like, well, I'll just drop it outside. I can't help you. And I'm like, what do you mean you can't help? Like, yeah. and I don't know if this is normal behavior. Like, I don't know if this is what they do. I'm just, I was thinking like common sense. Why would you not help me? Um, but eventually we got it all in and everything like that. But through the process, it was a process. Like you have, there's the health department. There's a plumbing department of the health department. Uh, 
some Carnegie, the community, like all these things that I didn't know. Yeah. So, well, what was your mindset at that point? You said you were, you said you had the place in May mm -hmm. and before you had it, your idea was to open a full restaurant. Yes. You know that this place is a little bit smaller. Right. So what's your mindset at that point? Like, what are you thinking that you're going to do? Do you think you're just doing desserts? Or are you going to do, cause so I, I've cause, always wanted to do food. So like everybody, when I open, everyone's like, so excited to get a baker in Carnegie. And I was like, stop saying that. This yeah. is not a bakery. It's not a bakery. Like you will not come in here. There is no bread in here. There is not 10 types of cupcakes. There's baked goods, but it, you wouldn't come in here and get um, cupcakes for work. Unless yeah. we've talked before time. Cause there's not even 24 in there at a time. Ever. Yeah. Um, but everyone knew me from these farmers markets. Like I'm so excited. There's a bakery. And I'm like, stop saying that. I was, I was more excited to do the food part of it. Cause I was like, now I can do the food. That's what I enjoy is the food part of it. I don't really like sweets. I can make them, but I don't like, they don't, I don't love them. It's not like your passion. No, I, food, like I said, you can do anything. There's no really right or wrong. It's whatever you want to do. Baking is more of a science. So my, I shifted to, okay, now I could finally do my food. I'll do desserts here and there or whatever, but I'll do the food. I think I had four sandwiches, four sandwiches and two salads at the beginning. I think that was my original menu. Um, and then through it, then I've added other things because I had to figure out kind of what works, what didn't work at that time. Yeah. Um, what people are buying, what's right. selling, what's not. Right. So like even the cinnamon rolls, that was definitely never on the menu ever from the get go. Like, Oh, that wasn't? No. I mean, I've made them before and they were good. Yeah. But then. But now they're a staple. Right. So now I'm like, okay, got to have the cinnamon rolls, got to have them. Like the cheesecakes and stuff like that. Like these Insane. weren't in my goals. Like I can't wait to try to make different flavor cheesecakes. But I was like, people like these things. So yeah. Like, so I, like, why would I not you, make you them? just kind of adapt to like what you have with you, what you're feeling like mm -hmm. making. And then if it's like going real good, yes. you know, obviously you keep it on the menu. Right. Yeah. Uh, which like the blueberry roll. Yeah. That the blueberry lemon roll came up out of stupid. Anywhere. But like the first time I think I made that, um, so there's white sugar in there. Um, so the first time I made, it, I think I made it with brown sugar. And I was like, it's too much. This is way too much. Like this isn't even good. And I was like, whatever, just forget it. And I just like stopped doing it for a while. And then like one day I'm like, I don't know, let's try it again. Yeah. And I, messed, I was like, okay, this shit's good. All huh. right, this works now. But like some things like work quicker and some things I'm just like, all right, just give up on. Like I'm not interested. It's not that, like I've tried like a bacon cinnamon roll. I still need to tweak that. Definitely wasn't good. Like it was just way too much in yeah. my opinion. Um, but it's not a bacon cinnamon roll is not on the top of my list that I need to work on it every week. It was yeah, something yeah, I yeah. had some free time and I'm like, shit, let's try this. Why not? Um, but in the beginning it was four sandwiches, mm -hmm. two salads. Yes. No sweets. No. So I don't have sweets specifically on my menu. Um, so like on the actual menu menu was the four sandwiches. The two uh, salads. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I always say don't have them because I don't know what I want to do. Yeah. So I don't want you to think you can get vanilla cake every day because you can't. Yeah. Have that expectation. Right. Um, and so desserts came like down the line. So when I opened it was September. So I was like pumpkin roll season. So that was the dessert at the time. Pumpkin roll. Well, how do you do this? How do you do this rollout? Like obviously it's Dagny's. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you settle on a name? How do you yeah. settle on, you know, what you want to do and how do you like kind of get your name out there? So I've, I've thought of, Different names. I kind of always wanted to use my name. I know my name's unique. I like my name. It's a conversation because people really don't know what it is. Like, I've never heard of another person yeah. named that. Um, funny because I've actually two customers that came in that their names are Dagny. Really? They came in because their names were Dagny. Wow. Yeah. One was a man and one was a woman, which is so funny. Do you, to me. I mean, is there like a story where your name came mm -hmm. from? So my name is from a book. It's called Alice Shrugged. Um, when my mom was pregnant, my dad read the book and he really liked the character. So her name's Dagny Taggart. That's my name. Um, it was basically a book as an adult. I should read it again. Cause I read it as a kid, but it's like a 1600 page book or something. Yeah. Um, should Atlas shrug. Yeah. Atlas shrugged. Yeah. It was a time when women weren't bosses. Her dad owned a railroad company. She basically wanted to take it over, but it wasn't really acceptable for women uh, in that time. Okay. Um, I'd have to read it again to really. Yeah. Tell yeah, you yeah. What it's about. But that's kind of like the idea, like yeah. a strong woman. All right. So I was like, all right, cool. Um, so it was like, my name's easy enough or different enough that I don't have to think of too many things. So I always wanted to be just Agnes, but then I realized that nobody knows what that is. Um, so I've showed up places. People are like, don't know what gender I am. People don't know what race I am. Cause they're, they don't know what a Dagny is. Like I've heard people say, what's a Dagny. Um, so I was like, all right, we need to like, I need to put something that says huh. it's food. So this group chat I have with my cousins that I said, they're like my sounding board between them and like my aunts, we would all, and my friends, we would all go back and forth. Like, 
Dagny's Diner, Dagny's Kitchen, Dagny's Eatery, Dagny's, like, and just literally have, like, I've written notebooks and stuff. And then it was, well, how do you want it to look? And I'm like, I like, like, a cursive style. I like a calligraphy. And so we just have notebooks of, like, uppercase Dagny, lowercase Dagny, color Dagny, black and white Dagny, like, all these, like, all these ideas. different, like, should Dagny's be cursive, Eatery be not, like, it's, and how, like, it wasn't as fun as you would think it was. To be honest, it's very stressful. Yeah, it's very in the stressful. Ass like, what kind of cursive do you want? It's like, what like, is this? Is your brand? It's going to be right. built off of this logo, right? And I'm like, makes you sick thinking about yes. it. And so the actual the guy that made my sign actually helped me with it. So he was like an older guy, and he was like, "I'll make your sign for you." And so we went through a few um, fonts, and I'm like, "Cool," because like after a while, I got like sick of doing that, like trying to find because yeah, you were looking at so many. I'm like, "Is this any different than this?" Yeah, and you're just being hypercritical right, at that point, right? And so I'm like, "All right, cool." Dagny's Eatery works. I like that. Like, I never wanted a diner. What I, could it have been? What was like the second choice? Probably would have been Dagny's Kitchen. Oh, okay, something like like it would always been Dagny's. Yeah. Um, so it was always along those lines. So I, we did that. Um, so as far as like the menu, I would give like my friends samples of food. Like I need you to try it. Like, so every dressing I have, I would make like in a creamy version and a vinaigrette version. And I would give them to my friends. Like here's 10 dressings. Tell me which one you like most. Like I would just like number them or letter them to here's two cakes. Tell me which one you like most. Ah. Um, but like it would really drill down. So like the relish that I gave you has red onions in it. Mm. So I'd give it to everyone with red onions, then give it to everyone with yellow onions and vidalions. Which one do you think is better? So like it was a more, it was more testing between just the people I knew. Yeah. Um, so every sandwich or salad, not the salads as much, but probably the sandwiches more would be more testing with my friends. That's a good, that's yeah. a, that's a cool like origin story of how that happens. Yeah. I would assume that it would be something like mm-hmm. that because you need someone to have a ta- uh, you need someone else besides you yes. to taste it. Yeah. Cause I'm not buying my food. So like <laughs> I like my food, but I like always say like, I'm not buying it. So it doesn't matter really if I love, I have to love it and be proud of it. Yeah. But if that's what you, every, all the customers like, that's what I need. Yeah. Um, that's what it is. It can't right. just be about what you want. Yeah. It has to be what is appealing to, you know, the majority of the people that are coming yeah. in. So it was, we did that. Um, I would just give them stuff. Like I drop it on their porch and here, tell me, what do you think? Um, I went to Breadworks and like, they gave me all this bread, like, cause I think that's what vendors do. I, di- I didn't know this. So like I called and I'm like, Hey, I'm interested in bread. Um, I want a ciabatta bread and I want a sourdough bread. I know those two for sure. And like, yeah. that's a huge reason I went through Breadworks is because they're ciabatta. Um, I'm a Mancini's lover for sure, but they didn't have ciabatta bread. So you go to Breadworks and I, I think I came in with eight or 10 loaves of bread. I'm not joking. And I'm like, I just needed like four slices to try it out. So I had all these breads. So I'd make all the sandwiches on different breads. Some were cold, some were pressed. So it was like a constant testing of everything. Um, until I felt like confident in what it is. Like the chicken salad had like jalapenos on at the beginning. I was like, oh, that's cool. Whatever. Until I ate one of the chicken salads and I was like, this is absolutely not good. This is hot as hell. Yeah. This isn't enjoyable. Like maybe a special, but we're taking the jalapenos off. So it was more testing, like just repeatedly doing it and testing it. And also like in the process of doing it, anytime there was some sort of event, I was making food, I was donating food. Um, any like school event I had or, excuse me, meeting or something like at the school or wherever I would always bring food. Yeah. Like I kind of got like feedback that way. And it might've just been pumpkin rolls cause that was easy. And I knew at that point, but it was a lot of testing. Excuse me. Are you doing like wholesale of like, you know, things like pumpkin rolls and everything? Are you taking orders like that just to like keep some. So I wanted to. So I, um, this is like kind of at the beginning of when I started the actual brick and mortar too. So I yeah. made these, little dessert boxes, like five of them. And they had maybe four to six desserts in them. And I took them to, I think four coffee shops around Pittsburgh. And I like add this little, again, back with my note, my little note of who I am and what I'm doing. And like, because at the beginning it was slow too. So I'm trying to like get, get into places, but nobody knows who I am. Nobody knows what my stuff is. Um, that really didn't go over well at all. I basically made all this stuff, wasted a whole day driving around, buying <laughs> coffee at every place and like <laughs> come out with four coffees. And I'm like, oh, And like, nobody like bit, like I stopped at one coffee shop and I'm like, Hey, is your manager owner here? And she was like, she's on a run. Do you want me to get her? And I'm like, no, I don't want you to get her from a run. Like, and it was, I was like, Hey, so you're not going to work. I could tell off top. Um, so I did it and I was like, all right, whatever. Okay. That didn't work out. Um, cause I thought like wholesale in my mind, wholesale was easier. I was like, if you just, if you get all these wholesale orders, that's cool. Yeah. But you have to be established to get all these wholesale orders. Yeah. It's like for starting, if you get 
10 orders a week, also you're not doing anything. Like if I'm selling a, a bakery or a coffee shop, a dozen of cinnamon rolls a week, it's not really doing anything yeah. at all. It's not, I'm not selling a hundred dozen, you know? Um, yeah. So I learned that the hard way kind of, hmm. that it wasn't as, wasn't as fruitful as I thought because. Yeah. That juice wasn't worth that squeeze. Right. I was dry. I had to package it all up almost individually so they could freeze it or. You would have um, been delivering it. Right. And so it was just too much. I was like, this isn't worth it. Like, yeah. so wholesale is kind of not my thing. Well, those are the trials and the tribulations. Yes. That's definitely the learning. Yeah. Now, I mean, like when you get in there September to, you know, how long until you feel like you got your foot under you? Um, Maybe now. Yeah. No, I don't know. Um, <laughs> So the first weekend we were open, they do, um, Carnegie has like a Carnegie crawl. So it's like something do on Friday nights in the summertime, they uh-huh. have like a band, they'll have, um, maybe food trucks or things like that, just to get the community out and everything like that. Um, so when we opened, it was actually a crawl and I'm like, and I did it on purpose and I was like, this is great. There'll be all these people down here anyway. So it was cool. Um, and like a lot of people came in that knew me and things like that. I was so excited. Like, Oh, this is great. And everything. It's so busy. So like, I was so nervous. I wouldn't have enough sandwiches. I go to Breadworks. I'm like, I need 30 loaves of bread. Like, and they're like today. I'm like, yeah, I do. And they're like, Oh, and it was probably laughing at me. Like, who is this girl? This is new girl. <laughs> like, cause I was so nervous. I wouldn't have all these sandwiches Yeah, or wouldn't have enough. I definitely overestimated and definitely didn't need that much bread at all. So I had all these sandwiches made and probably then I was probably giving them to people like just take them to my friends or whoever was down there. Um, So it was nice, like being in the community and being known in the community. Um, I do have a lot of support that would come down and stuff, but it still was the few sandwiches and the salads and people just wanted to just be nubby, just come down and check it out. Like for my first night, I thought it was great. So that thing goes till nine o'clock. I think I was there till probably one or two in the morning. And I was like, cool, tomorrow we're not opening at seven. Um, I need to sleep a little bit because I didn't know what to expect. Um, So that that kind of like it was nice getting all these people there but that was like the first night which was exciting you yeah know? so as far as like catching my feet i feel like n- literally just recently i'm kind of getting some sort of a groove like that works for me so i found that like i need to be there early in the morning that works for me better i've also been there all night long that's harder um i used to stay up very late now i go to bed very early so like i figured what what is now working for me this is all you still. Yeah. Just you. Yes. So I, it's a lot of figuring it out. Like I've made a lot of mistakes. Well, that's how, that's, that's, that's how what I, I was kind of getting to is like how you develop a routine because yeah. if you're baking a bunch of stuff mm-hmm. and you're cooking a bunch of food, everything is like a bunch of plates spinning in the that's, air. That's very much so what it is. So, I mean, like it, it's pretty much just all touch and go. Like, is there times where you just like messed up a bunch of stuff and like, oh, you know, <laughs> definitely made cheesecakes with no eggs and didn't know until the end of the freaking cheesecake and like like because it came out and i'm like you look weird something's yeah. weird about you and i'm like and so like and then i'll text like um the pastry stuff i was telling you about i'm like so is there any way to salvage this like and she's like oh i don't know what yeah. happens if you don't put eggs in there um it doesn't stabilize <clears throat> so it might be still edible but like it'll be like creamy oh uh, yeah know, it wouldn't like really be a nice slice so it'd still be edible but yeah but so it's like, not going to have any structure to no. it. So like at this point, like I don't just give it to someone. I'd be yeah. like, if you want this, I messed it up. And I think <laughs> actually like one time I messed it up and um, there was a customer in there. She had her young daughter. And I was like, hey, does your daughter like, this is random, but she didn't like to decorate cakes or anything. She was like, she loves doing that. I was like, so I have this cheesecake and I messed it up. Um, Like you can eat it. It's still good. But why don't you take it? And like, just let her play with it. Like, I'm just going to put it, put it in the garbage. And she was like, oh gosh, thank you so much. Like made her day. And I was like, cool, that's good. But lesson learned, get the yeah. eggs and the cheesecake. Um, so I guess my process, I would say now I'm like getting it better that I try to get to work by five o'clock. So like between five and seven is usually prep for like the beginning of the day. So like the weekdays are much more lunch people. The weekends are much more breakfast people. Yeah. So I try to get done what I know needs done sooner in the day. Um, I make sure the eggs and the bacon and sausage and everything like that's cooked. Um, if there's cinnamon rolls. So I try usually to roll them the night before. Um, and then in the morning I'll take them out, let them sit out and I could bake them. But the thing about that is, you know, if they're hot, it's really hard to mess with them. They're still baking in the pan. If you come in and you want a cinnamon roll, I'm picking it up. It's hot sugar on my hand. You put frosting on it, then right. it melts off. Right. So like I try to get there early to bake it or I'll bake it the night before, depending what it mm-hmm. is. Um, so I've found out, 
what kind of works, but that doesn't mean it always Jesus, works. Jesus, I didn't even think about that. You make cinnamon rolls in the morning and then you have to wait for it to cool so you could even have them right. to be able to eat them. So there's all these things that yes. people just don't... This is why we do this podcast yes. is because people don't even think about that, I'm sure. No, people don't know. And so I've, I've learned to... I would get mad sometimes when people didn't know. Because I'm like, why don't you know this? But then I'm thinking, like you just said, people just don't know. No one knows this. It's not a bad thing. It's just why would you? And that's why me and Antoinette always say, like, you know, you need to get yourself on social media more because you're the reason the place is (laughs) as great as it is. I mean, like, you're, uh, you know, a character, so to speak. It's like you're a face of it all. (laughs) Right. And it's it's really impressive to, like, hear the process up until now Mm -hmm. and to hear you say that just now you're starting to feel like you have, like, your feet under you Mm -hmm. because it got to be so crazy with all the different things you make in there. I mean. On a given day, I was I was trying to think to explain to my guy at work today mm-hmm. what was in there. You have cold salads, cold salads in the in the fridge. You got a multiple of cheesecakes. You got you got uh, dips. You got dressings. What else is in there? There is uh, breakfast pizza. You got uh, banana, like all these different things. So for it to all be made and all be made to be ready at the same time. Yes, and just to have the capacity to do that is really, really intense. And no one knows about, yes. no one even thinks about this. You know, the the common person that's just mm-hmm. going out on the weekend to have like a coffee with their person and mm-hmm. go to get a snack. This is shit that like doesn't even enter half the people's minds, I think. No. And that's why I hope that like people listen to like, you know, this and like other, I, I've said on here numerous times, my favorite episodes are chefs mm-hmm. and, uh, uh, artists because like you know no one really knows no. how crazy it is behind that you really have no clue it's wild i gotta yeah. be what what is like you know is your daughter like taking after you as far as like cooking does she like it or is it kind of like too much where she wants to be away so, from it working for your mom isn't the fun most fun like her yeah. friends love working for me like her friends always <laughs> want to help she like she doesn't think it's a real job and i'm like yeah. oh go get a real job so go get a real job where you have an actual lunch break where in the summertime, if you want to go with your friends, you can't. Yeah. Um, if you're late, you get fired. I'm like, here, you kind of get like some leeway. Yeah. You, know? um, you probably get paid more than any kid you know. Like, so take it or don't, or whatever you want to do. Um, so she likes to cook. So I've always taught her to cook too. Like she'll tell you she can make steak probably better than me is what she will tell you. Um, <laughs> not true. Um, but I will make... I teach her like everything I make. So just kind of like I said, like the laundry earlier, like I'm like, Hey, why don't you look at how I'm doing this? And why do I do it like this? Like, um, and so she knows how to cook certain days. She really wants to make her own food or make us dinner. Yeah. And other days she's like, Oh, you make it better. So I'm trying to get her to do it for certain customers. Um, like when it's slower, but customers that are in there all the time. And I'm like, do you mind if she tries to make her sandwich? Like I wouldn't do it with a new person. I wouldn't do because She's a 15 year old girl. She's yeah, going to yeah. get flustered. I understand it. Like I'm particular. I don't like how you cut it. That's too thick. I don't like it. Like, <laughs> and so no one wants to hear that. Like, Hey, your tomato is too thick. Well, how thick that not that thick. Like, yeah. well, that's a good answer. That's understandable. People, first time customers, like that's a big impression. Mm-hmm. Right. So if they have a, if you, if you give them something that's not like, you know, up to their standards, right. they could just write you off. Yeah. So she's helpful. Um, Teenagers are teenagers. Yeah. I feel like someday she's great. Very helpful. <laughs> someday she's a total teenager. And I'm like, yo, get out. I'm like, customers know that. I'm pretty like open about that. Like that is my business, but I'm also a mother. So I don't know if it's right or wrong, but probably me being a mother probably has to come first. Um, yeah. Like if she's in there being an asshole, I'm going to call her out. Like, and I have to like say it in front of people in a way like, Hey, I'm trying not to yell at you in front of these people. But like, usually other parents can understand yeah it. they can understand like they're like they're like there's like a look and i'm like this is my polite way of saying this to you get it in check you know or we could talk about this outside or whatever it may be um so it just depends on the day on yeah what she how she feels um but she's just a very much a teenager that that's how i describe my kid well that's um, good that's what she nice, should be like she even when she wants to make a lunch like i was like no you come back here and make it i'm actually working come back here i've cleared off a table for you like, let's go through the ingredients. What do you want to do on it? Or show me, or like figure out her own creation or whatever it may be. Yeah. So it's nice. It is nice that she'll be an adult and know how to handle it. Are, are you open every day? Right now I'm open five days a week. Once it gets um, Thursday through Monday. Once it gets nicer, I'll probably reopen on Wednesday again. Uh-huh. So I was open six days and everyone kept telling me I needed time. I needed time for myself. So when I'm closed, I'm still there. So everyone's always like, what days are you off? I'm like, I'm closed Tuesday and Wednesday. I am there, there every single day. 
Um, but it's nice that if I want to go back to sleep, I can. If I don't want to start my day till 10 a.m., I can. Um, I usually start it pretty early anyway. I'd like just rather get my stuff done. Yeah. I have to get done. But it's five days a week now. I'm, excuse me, five days a week I'm open, seven days a week I'm there. No. So there's always stuff to do. There's never, ever, ever nothing to do. Like, and somebody's like, what do you do? And there's nothing to do. I don't know. I'll tell you when that happens. There's yeah. always something to do. I'm always like looking at the next thing of what, I don't know, maybe it's the weekend. Maybe it's the, like, whatever it may be. There's always something that's going to make my next day easier. That's how how often it. are you like trying to focus on new things for the menu or, you know, like trying to change things? Because I know that like with doing that, you are adding more, uh, just more shit that you got to yes. deal with. Yeah. So like how often, you know, what's your mindset as far as that? So I purposely have a menu that I don't have um, any pastries, any desserts, any quiches, anything like that listed. So I don't have to be held to that. Um, so I like that I can change that up Yeah, for sure. I like to do a special because then I could, then I could. So if I want to do a Reuben, I could, I don't want a Reuben on my menu every day because I look at it like every ingredient I have, I have to use like three times. I have to be able to use it three times. So there's only one ingredient, pepper jack cheese that I use on one thing, but mm. everything else I use multiple times that I'm not just waiting for that one sandwich to sell. Yeah. It's like a Reuben. So you always need thousand Island, which means I need to make it. You always need rye bread. You always need sauerkraut. You always need corned beef. Yeah. All those four things. What else are you? Yeah. That's not like an interchangeable ingredient. Sandwich on a rye bread. Like, I mean, they might, but like nobody wants a ham and cheese on rye. It's so fascinating because, (laughs) you know, talking to chefs that's come up in conversation before. Mm -hmm. It's like trying to, because I was watching uh, Gordon Ramsay and Mm -hmm. uh, he goes into this restaurant and there's like a restaurant with a menu of like eight pages. And he was like, why the hell do you have so many pages of shit right. he was like you obviously can't be using no, all this so it just got to be old ingredients yes. but the idea of chefs being crafty with their ingredients and how uh how they could use them over all their dishes mm-hmm. is so fascinating to me yeah it's it saves you a lot of money you yeah. know by not wasting things um and then it kind of you know your ingredients i know what nuts i like more than others like i I don't like cashews. There's not really ever a cashew in there. <laughs> I just don't like them. Yeah. Um, and, but I also don't know how many things I can make cashew with walnuts. Like walnuts are in sauces and baked things and salads and a lot of things that that works for me. So even some, some menu items come from a customer like, Hey, did you ever try this? And like, now I joke, I was like, you say that on purpose. Cause now you want me to try it. Like they'll be like, Hey Dagny, what about X, Y, Z? And I'm like, okay, so you want me to try it? Cause you want to try it. You want to yeah. sample it. Like, it's like a, a running joke now. Um, but like the breakfast burrito, that started as a special. And so I have all that stuff every day. It's it's peppers, it's spinach, um, potatoes, meat, eggs, cheese, hot sauce, wraps. And I was like, wait, I have all this stuff normally. Why would we not put this on the menu? That's what I would get if I went out to eat would be a breakfast burrito. Yeah, the last time I was there, I yeah. got that real good. Yeah, so I'd, it was always a special. And then I'm like, forget this. This goes on the menu because this needs to go on the menu now. Um, so that's kind of like how new new things go. Um, so I think we started four sandwiches. Maybe there's 10 now, including wraps. Um, but I want it like that. I want it to be small. Like yeah. I've, I've heard, I hear some of the not good things people say to, whether it's online or whether people it's through about them, you or me or my place or my menu or whatever it may be. So like I've heard before people have said like, Oh, she only got four sandwiches. And I was like, mm, well, I made the Doing menu. Well. I know there's four sandwiches. Yeah. Like, I know, like, These you're not knocking pillars. me. Like, I made the whole menu. I know there's four <laughs> sandwiches. Like, um, and so I get it. Like, oh, you don't have this. Well, why don't you have, I don't know. Why don't you have artificial sweetener? Because I don't. That's why. Because that's like, I think in my head, like, a beauty of having any business or whatever it is that you're on. You get to do whatever you want. Yeah. It doesn't mean that's going to work out great. But I also think that you attract who who you attract yeah you know so some people like that it's a small place and it's just me i'm sure somebody somewhere is like man is it just this lady it's just this lady there's six people in line and oh my gosh and she has to do this like i'm sure it goes both ways um but that's the beauty of it i could do what i want so i don't want certain things on the menu because i don't want you to come in thinking you have this every day yeah and it makes it fun like what is it going to be this week i don't know it could be anything. Could be nothing. Yeah, it got to be exciting, <laughs> somewhat to be. Able, it, it's definitely stressful, I'm sure, yes. but got to be exciting to be able to like have that freedom to just like 
you know, change up your environment yeah. uh, or not really your environment, but what mm-hmm. you're using every day. Yeah. And it works cause it's just me. So I feel like I have a very different model than a lot of people. Yeah. It is just me. There is no recipes written down. I don't, I get the question. Why don't you hire someone? If I would hire someone today and I could pay them what they deserve to be paid, I would hire someone to come in at three o'clock, clean it. That's what I would do. Clean all the dishes, clean the floors, wipe everything down, sanitize, do that's, that's what I would want. I don't really want someone in there prepping with me or cooking with me. Um, eventually I do, but the space that I have is very small. Yeah. So it's very small to even dedicate, to give you a table to go prep stuff. Um, my aunt's retired. She comes down like once a month and she'll help me prep. Um, but it's funny because I'm doing so many things at once, like making dressings might take me an hour yeah. because I have to cut it and do all this stuff. When I give her something to do, it takes 20 minutes because she's dedicated to that task. And it's funny. Cause she's yeah, like, all right, you, I'm done next. You're time. buzzing around to all right. these different things. Right. And so she comes down, she gets so much stuff done, like two hours. I'm like, what is huh. that what it's like? Like, um, so it's like a different model because it's just me. So I don't have, I don't have like, um, I don't know what the real word is for, but I don't have specifications of exactly what it, what things are. Yeah. And I could get to change that, which is nice too. That is good. Yeah. What, uh, uh, you said that you said that, you know, eventually you would like to hire someone to do mm-hmm. this. You know, do you have any ideas of, you know, expanding? Yeah, I would like to. I've so, been saying it out loud because you know you have to talk it into put it into existence. Right. Exactly. Yes. Um, I would like to have a bigger space where people could sit down. Yeah. When I opened, I didn't think it was a big deal because, like I said, it was at the end of COVID. Whatever. It has now become a big deal. Um, not a huge deal, but it's a conversation every single day that I get. Is this all the seating you have? Is there anywhere else to sit? Where do people sit? Oh um, uh, yeah. What do you do when there's no seats? Like all these questions and. Hmm. I think that I, it's hard for me to grow a little bit because I only have so much space. So yeah. if anyone notices, like around the holidays, I usually don't have a real menu. So like when it's when it was just Easter, we had Easter holiday pickups like two weeks ago. Um, and I said, you know, there's no menu items available. People don't get why there's no menu items available. So there's no menu items available because I'm making all these Easter things that I don't have time to make your eggs. I don't have time to make bacon and slice meat and everything like that. Yeah. On the opposite side, I don't have room for all this stuff. So if I sell all these cheesecakes, a fridge can only hold so many cheesecakes yeah. in a box. Um, you know, maybe, maybe four on a shelf. How many can I really put in there? So it's a very small space. So it's, I, it's hard for me to grow people wise seating. And then I can't have tons of food cause I don't have that much room. Yeah. So I can only buy a certain amount of things because of the room that I have versus if you have a huge walk-in or if you have several floors or something like that, where you have the for room. sure. So I would like to expand. Um, I like like the counter service situation. I like people coming up. I like people ordering. I feel like a lot of places do that now. Some people love that. Some people hate that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting that that mm-hmm. whole conversation is very interesting because mm-hmm. some people like it and some people really hate it. Yeah. And I, I get it. Um, I don't know. I think it depends on the place that you're at. You know, maybe, <clears throat> maybe if you're a really, really fancy restaurant, wouldn't be counter service, obviously. Yeah. But your dinner's probably also two hundred dollars a person. It's logistical logistics. You know that's what the point of the conversations are for the podcast because you know places like Oak Hill, mm-hmm. uh, they do the same type of thing, right. counter service. But it's just logistically, right. it's a better way to do things. Yeah, uh, and. I don't know. It's, it's understandable. I, I feel like the people that bitch about it are the people that just like, you know, why you don't want them people anyway. No. Well, that's it's why like, I said you go to Denny's you get to create who you, the people that you want. So certain people don't mind it. Certain people do. Yeah. Certain people when I'm in there, customers will almost take food to other customers. Like, and I'll joke about it. Like, Hey, take a sandwich over to him. Like, and it's usually people that have been there. It's not a first time or a person. Yeah. But there's also people that sit there and notice it's me by myself and will sit in their table and not come over to the counter and get their stuff. And not that it's a big deal, but I could tell you want me to bring it to you. Yeah. Like, and that's not the service we have. So I always say like, we order it here, you pick it up here, you pay here, everything's right here. Um, I would like to find a bigger space. I really like Carnegie. That's like my people. Yeah. It's um, a cool spot down there. Real, like that main street, like I got a good spot. Like, and I didn't realize when I got in that spot, it was as busy as it was. I'm next to a coffee place. I'm next to a pizza place. I'm next to a liquor store. Um, Every event they do, the Easter money, Santa, everything they do is right, right on through that street. You. Like, so by default. Got all that parking right. too, which is a big deal. Right. And so it, um, when we started and we were inside for the crawls and stuff, 
eventually down the line, we started grilling outside and stuff like that. So like when they do those events outside, that's, it attracts more people because nobody, it's a small little space. So sometimes people don't want to come in. People are weird about it. Or I don't know if I want to look in here. Um, so it's like, it's, I get it every day. like people staring in my window and like, you can come in and just look, I don't, you don't have to buy anything. You're not going to hurt my feelings. And I tell people, I'm like, you can just nab around. It's fine. Like, yeah. and people like try to sneak out. I'm like, you don't have to sneak out. I don't care if you buy, like, I'm not offended. You just want to see what's in here. You don't know. And that's okay too. Yeah. But I would like a bigger space because I think I could do more. I also don't have a full kitchen. So this is part of the learning thing too. So for you to have like a full stove top, um, fryer, and things like that, you have to hood. Have to have a hood. So hood's like tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Definitely didn't know that either. Um, so that's why I have a convection oven. Like I have a little convection oven. So that limits me as well. It only has two or four shelves in it. Versus if you go to a large place, you could bake you could bake ten racks at a time. Yeah. So when I was making if I want to make hundreds of cinnamon rolls, I can only make thirty at a time, thirty two at a time. Versus mm. you could put 320 in an oven at one time. Yeah. So you're like, you're, this is like, you're like a goldfish in a little fish bowl. Yes. <laughs> but if you get a bigger tank, you know, obviously you'll grow. Right. So I think that uh, the opposite side of that is that I would need people at that point. Yeah. I could not do it by myself as much as I think I could do everything. I could not do that by myself. Yeah. Um, so one of the good things about me being alone is that I'm only, I'm only dependent on me. So my cook's never going to not show up. And if they don't, it's me. Yeah. The cashier. There's no one's, no one's car is breaking down. No one broke up with their boyfriend. They got relationship problems. They can't come to work. It's just me. So I don't have to, if I don't want to, um, but I'm pretty, I can count on myself. So I'm okay with that. Yeah. The bigger the space means the more people. So that's another hurdle. Eventually um, it will be hiring people, firing people, people that have a good work ethic. I don't really know anything about hiring people like legally, what you can and can't do. Yeah. Um, you know, my kid, I could do whatever I want to her. Yeah, there's I could a lot like of tell shit. Her, you know, you're, you're effing up right now. Like, that's not going to work. I don't know if you could say that to a person without, <laughs> I don't know. Like, that's the kind of boss I want. Right, like, I, I just want to know, you know. Right, just get to Don't sugarcoat it. Yeah, no. Um, so that's what I would like to do. But, you know, I don't know how soon or whatever that is. Yeah. But I just am going to keep saying it because it's. I'd like it to happen. Well, if you're getting to the point where you feel like you're finally getting, you know, your feet under you and things are going well, that's like the sweet spot where you don't feel as like, you know, chaotic and stressed. Mm -hmm. You have that just amount of stress that you need to like, you know, keep you accountable. Yeah. But it's like, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to do too much. Right. And, you know, compromise what your, your product. Yeah. Correct. And so I feel like a lot of places do do that. Um, yeah. I can't think of any that I'd, prefer to name off top but i feel like i've gone to places like oh you got bigger and this isn't as good anymore like i'd rather you just be you and your husband in this little space and yeah. that was really good um for sure you know and that's okay for some people um but i also like i said i'm there all the time i don't know if i want to be there all the time every day for 15 hours a day or whatever it is it's very taxing on you mentally emotionally physically like and i didn't realize that either yeah so when I sat at a desk all day, like at the end of the day, I want to get outside and go do things. Clock, and you're everything. Done. Right. Now I stand all day. I've been standing since 5 a.m. So like the minute I sit down, I start falling asleep. Like yeah. that's also not as fun. Um, and then whenever you're not <clears throat> doing anything, your thought is like, what do I have to do for tomorrow? Right. What do I have to do with that? Right. You it's leave like, PNC, you're like, I'm right. done. You could just, and that's like, I miss like the weird things like that. Like just being able to shut off. Like, you know, I'm at someone's like event and i'm like okay, i gotta go i gotta go back to work or i gotta get up early yeah and then like people like will feel bad or something. i was like don't feel bad like that's not the thing to say to me i chose to do this like don't feel bad for me this is part of the responsibility of doing it well what do you do for like you know uh what do you do for your mental health like what do you do to like take a break well, you know besides being a mom yeah. besides you know all your work at dagny's you know what do you like doing that's like kind of just like your way to chill oh it's like working out, walking, running, something like that. Something that would probably be and like that. That's hard to find a time, yeah, time to do, to do it. And like that's not really an excuse, but like go in the gym at 3 a.m. It's hard. Yeah. That's hard to Especially do. Especially if you have 15 hours of you on your right. feet. Right. And so then you go after work. Do you want to go after 15 hours? You don't Never. either. But like you kind of need to do something um, just to like get out of your house, get out of your business, get out of your like. Yeah. Just head, you read still. You know? I don't. Probably I don't I would have like time. to read. I keep buying books. My bookshelf's just adding. Yeah. Know? Um, 
but then I fall asleep. I know. So like the minute, like even when I do computer work, I fall asleep. Like the minute I stop and I was like, I don't know how you keep going. I'm like, Oh, I don't stop. <laughs> I don't stop. Like the minute I sit down, I'm like, okay, nodding off. Like I can't watch a movie. Yeah. Like my daughter, and I've been trying to watch like a movie for two weeks. Yeah. Eight, eight thirty. I'm like starting oh, yeah, to fall asleep on sure. the couch for sure. Yeah. And so it's funny. <clears> we had softball practice last night at eight o'clock and I was like, Oh my gosh, that's this is late. My bedtime. Like, right. And the yeah. old, older your kid gets, the later the practice. That's gets. crazy. Like, my guy at work, his, oh his sons play intramural hockey. He was like, I was going to go watch it. They said the game didn't start till 10 30. Right. It's like, yes. I've been sleeping for two hours. Oh, that's a lot. That's right. And yeah. so like this morning I was dragging them <laughs> at this field at like 10 o'clock. I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like, yeah. And so, but you have to do something for yourself. Like, and that's what everyone keeps like telling me. So I'm trying, this is like my year, this year's goal. Like, do something for yourself. So you like gotta. you got like, um, <clears throat> so we started like my daughter and I go into like a nice dinner once a month. That's good. And I was like, I don't really eat at nice places. Not for any reason, just cause I don't really want to get dressed up and go. Yeah. Like it's easier to me just grab food or make food. Um, but I want to try these places. Yeah. Why it's nice to get out. Like, yeah. So I was like, we make it a day. We get dressed up and we go out and like try these different places. Um, also to like show her like, this is what kind of fine dining is. So it's funny what I know versus what she knows. Cause I'm like, Hey, your napkin goes on your lap. She's like, why? I'm like, cause it does. That's what you do here. Like, she's like, why do they keep giving us new forks? And I'm like, well, this is what they do at nice restaurants. Like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know, man, she's giving us four forks, but this is what they do. And they crack your pepper for you. And they do these things. Um, yeah. So I'm trying to do that. Like I'm, this is my year goal. Give experiences, have experiences. Yeah. yeah cause I don't want to just work in mom every time. No, I, I like that. Like, Ben, who uh, Ben from Yoli's, who came down and visit you, that's Very what nice he's guy. doing with yeah. his daughter and son as well. They go out a little <laughs> date every month, yeah. uh, and uh, I like that. You know, that's a because I ask him the same thing. He's going to be coming on in a few weeks. This mm-hmm. whole you're the start of like a a month long food, uh, you know, grouping of people. Mm-hmm. But Ben's going to be on. They just opened that catering spot. Yeah. But I, uh, you know, I ask him. I'm like, you know, like how do you even like manage it? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just. You know, it's crazy to hear. That's why, you know, you, all you guys are fascinating. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, in high, I guess in 20 years, we'll all find out what our kids really thought of us. And, but I also think I'd rather my kids see me busting my ass. It's something I enjoy. Yeah. Being mad that I'm not happy with a cake that I made, even though she thinks it's great versus me crying because I can't balance a balance sheet. Like, yeah. I have cried so many times over not being able to balance being she's balance sheet that like, that's not what I want her to be 40 and saying. Yeah. You know, I don't want her to say she worked her ass off. She didn't have time for me, but I also make, I do make time for her. Yeah. Like, um, I, I try to be very clear on like my Instagram stories. Like I will close in the middle of a summer on a Sunday because she's in a softball tournament. You could be mad at me. I would rather you be mad at me because in 40 years again, you are not going to be like, you know what? Dagny's eatery is closed July 28th. Yeah. No, my kid will remember that. Like, it's like you want to go and experience these things as well as right, a mother. Right. And so, yeah. Um, that got to come with like, you know, the, the, the template that you run at Dagny's like you are, you know, just a self, self-made, self-independent, you know, <laughs> one woman show. And some days, you know, your daughter's got to come first. People yeah. got to understand that. Yeah. And a lot of people do. Like I get a lot of messages like, Hey, thanks for being so transparent. Hey, do you, Hey, like good for you. Like, um, so that's like nice, you know? Um, because when I worked in a corporate job, they really don't care about your kid yeah. at all. No one gives a like, shit they about don't care. you. Like you're like, Hey, my kid's sick. They're like, so you don't have someone to pick them up. And you're like, <laughs> well, if I did, would we be having this conversation? I like, know. And it's like really awkward. Like and now I get to choose that I don't have to open if I want to go to her thing or if I don't want to or whatever it may be. That's like important to me. Yeah. So it's got to nice feel to good that. to be able to like have that, you know, yeah. that, that you, that you had the nice. ultimate, you know, the ultimate say. Yeah. So the opposite side, like, because I think people think um, business owners have all this freedom, have all this money. Maybe they do. I don't know. I don't. So, they don't. I mean, like, the people that I talk to, no, it's, everyone's working like you. Right. You're working like a dog to try. So if everything's paid, I'm happy. Yeah. I'm last. So like if all my bills are paid, my rent, every single thing I need paid, as long as my bills are paid, like I don't really go out much anymore. So I, my work clothes are leggings and shorts and tank tops and stuff that gets grease on it. So I'm not buying new high heels anymore. I'm not buying new um, like work suits or anything like that. Yeah. So I'd say like I pay myself last. Like I want to make sure everything's, everything's done that I'm not like in trouble anywhere. Um, 
But you know, you close, you don't get paid. Yeah. Work at PNC and you close, I get paid. Yeah. Or you don't, you know, you don't show up to work. Good point. So I get that a lot. Like, it must be so cool. That's fair. Pros and cons with everything. Right. And so it is like, I want to take off a week after Christmas. Cool. That means I take off a week. You don't get paid a week. You don't. Week behind. Right. So it's like, and people don't understand that. Well, hopefully now, hopefully now after they listen to this conversation, they will. (laughs) I think that, I think that they will. I think we did a, I think we, do you think there's anything that I didn't touch on as far as, you know, the restaurant end of things? You know, you're pretty, I mean, you're impressive every time we've been there. And I'm not, I don't, I don't just say it just to say, but <laughs> we've been enough that you could tell that we enjoy it. Yeah. yeah for uh, sure. We go back to that. We're creatures of habit. Mm-hmm. We go to the places we like. Yes. Um, and you know, we're both fans. We love yeah, what you do. I it. You enjoy it, like, you know, you're, you're getting there. Yeah. It's like, you just keep on chugging along. Yeah. We're happy with it. Yeah. That's what you I know, think. if the people that are not happy with it, you know, go next door or some shit, yeah. you know, I feel like in life, you just can't be worried about the people that aren't. You can't. With whatever it may be. They're can't like, be worried about it. The older you get, you're just like, nobody really cares about people, you. People, they like, sorted like themselves that. out. You yeah. sort yourself out. It's just easy to, it's just, you got to worry about you. Got to worry like, about you. Whatever makes you happy. And I say that like, I'm big on like, whatever have makes you have peace. You got to have peace with yourself. Like it's your day every day. Yeah. You know, so whatever you got to do. Whatever you got to do. I just like keep it positive. I try to. I, I think to. it's what I try to do. I, I feel mean, like you're a pretty, perfect, pretty positive person <laughs> yeah. from, uh, from our experiences that we've had with you. But, uh, all right. So you, uh, you want to get to the ending segment that I do with everyone. Okay. Uh, I do an ending segment with everyone. It's called desert Island questions. I'm excited about this. I have no idea what your answers could be. Uh, desert Island questions. Whenever I give each guest three categories to take with them on a desert island and use until they starve to death and die. First category, three movies. Three movies. If you had to pick three of your favorite movies ever. Okay. They're so random. So Con Air. Like, put the bunny in the, ever put the, bunny in TV, the box. You could watch that every time. Every time. Um, a whole different spectrum. It's a wonderful life. That's good. Have you ever seen that Christmas? I saw parts of it. Yeah. You know, I, I, I said on here like, for Christmas one, I've never seen the full thing sat really? through. I know. I, I just know. started it. Um, my sister-in-law told me about like five years ago. Yeah. I like watch it once a year at Christmas and like, I got to watch it. Yeah, It's like a feel good movie. Um, and then pretty woman, pretty woman. Yeah. There you go. That's like a solid one. Just found out that Julia Roberts lost best female lead actress, uh, that year to Kathy Bates for really? her role in misery. Oh, yeah, okay. it was pretty wild to see uh, all those people with like, you know, Kathy yeah. Bates out there killing yeah. it. Yeah. Um, okay, second category, books. I'm curious about this. What are three of your favorite books you've ever read, oh if you gosh. had to pick? Um, it's been a long time since I read a book. I'm really into like self-help books, yeah. motivational books. Um, three of the best books. I honestly couldn't tell you three books that I... One. What's one book that you loved growing up? Oh, that I, I liked, um, growing up, I liked the Shel Silverstein books. What's that? Like, they're like rhyming books. Like when you were a kid, kid. Oh yeah. Like I'd have to, I'd have to find one of the books. Um, was that like chicken soup? Oh, I used to love those. I forgot about chicken that. soup oh. for the teenage oh, soul. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Those were the I shit. About that. Yeah. I have a whole box of those in my attic. Yeah. Like, those I were would good. Buy, I, okay. We'll go with that. I would buy them and highlight passages and like, so it's funny now as an adult, I'm like, what was important to you? <laughs> oh, that would be fun to look through. Teenage, yeah. I forgot I used to love those. Um, so I buy a lot of books. It's just a matter of when do I have the time or cause when do I actually want to rate? Like, and I like books. I don't like Kindle. Like I want to feel the book. Yeah. Um, it's what everyone says until they get a Kindle. I know. I was the same way. I know. I'm just not there yet. I understand <laughs> it. It's hard. It, I have a whole uh, Tupperware bin full of books. I used to just go to like Borders yeah, uh, and I would just like go crazy in there, buy like six different books, never read them. Yeah. So I just have like a whole grip of books in there that are- but You're like a big reader, aren't you? <sighs> Not, uh, I'm new. Like I'm a new reader. Okay. I started reading in June yeah. of last year and I kind of just never stopped. But before that, it was probably 18 years since I read a book. Really? Yeah, I just never really cared about it. Yeah. I, I went on a work trip, read a book, and I figured out I enjoyed it. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I think that I uh, have been reading, honestly, more and more because I have, uh, it's the only way I could kind of like get out of my head. Yeah. Sure. Uh, to turn my brain mm-hmm. off. Because if I'm watching a movie, mm-hmm. I'm still thinking of bullshit that I have right. to do. But if I'm reading, I have to actively like, you know, 
read yeah. and like comprehend what I'm reading or it'll just be like, you know, got to reread it again. Yeah, right. But uh, yeah, that's the only time I could really like turn my brain off. So I enjoy that. Yeah. It's, yeah. uh, it's interesting. Yeah, I'm a big book nerd. I do like to read. I would like to read the book again that I was named after. Okay. Like now as an adult. You know, you're an adult. Everything's different. Everything is different. Yeah. So um, understandable. Okay. Uh, third category, three CDs. Oh. Okay. Um, my first CD, Alanis Morissette. Yeah. So excited to get that one. Um, Mariah Carey, anything. Um, probably the Dream Lover, I think that's what it's called. Dream Lover Fantasy, whatever that album. But... Any Mariah Carey, I'll do all day, every we day. We love Mariah. Yeah, love her. Um, and probably Whitney Houston. Anything of Whitney Houston. Those are good choices. Yeah, I go kind of all over the place. It That's all right. Like, but it's all good. Those yeah. are good. Those yeah. are all good. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, the third to last question, you are uh, going to have a death row meal. So you get ready to get put to death. You get your last choice uh, and you get the death row meal. Uh, so the death row meal, I had the volume down, so whatever, <laughs> uh, death row meal though, what would your main core or what would your entree, not an entree appetizer, main course and a dessert be? Oh my gosh. Wow. Appetizer, main course, and dessert. um, appetizer. I don't know if it's an appetizer, but it would be a salad of okay. some sort. I'm a huge that salad person, it's like tons of nuts, seeds, probably no meat, really good cheese. Um, something like Probably that my nana would make with like an Italian dressing of something that she's made. Um, okay. My meal would, oh God, that's so hard. Um, I, mm, I'm going to go with pasta. Mm, Just with like a red sauce pasta? No, absolutely not. <laughs> You're not a red sauce person? I do, but I'm very picky about red sauce. I feel okay. like a lot of people are picky with red sauce. Um, I'll probably take like more of a cream or an oil based sauce. Okay. Um, again, no meat. I'm not like a big meat person. Okay. Um, what about with dessert? Some pine nuts in it too. But dessert, almond tort. Almond tort. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's been picked a lot on here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is your? What do you think you make best? Like, what are you most proud of at your restaurant? I think I make really good sauces. Yeah, the sauces are I mean, crazy. I know it's not like food, food. Um, I think that. And the sauces are really good. Um, I would say my combination of making a sandwich is probably pretty good in a salad. I mean, you make pretty much, uh, like we had some feta dip. That. Yeah. That was great. That came from an accident. That came because I ordered so much feta. Well, like literally, it, and I was like, okay, this that is was great. Really but good. it worked out really well. So that's like how I was saying earlier, a thing comes into a menu that I had so much feta. I was like, whatever, I'll try this. Figure and out how to do really it. People really liked it. So I was like, now we do this. Okay. I follow a Reddit sub uh, called, uh, it might be like, I can't remember which one it is, but it's like a chef one. Mm-hmm. And it'll say, our, uh, the kitchen manager ordered like, you know, 30 roots of ginger. Mm-hmm. Like, what could I make with yeah. this? Oh, that's and it's cool. like all these other chefs that are like, you could do this, you could do that. Oh. So uh, like the other day, the dude was like, my my guy cracked 40 eggs. Like, mm-hmm. what could I, and it was like a high-end restaurant. People yeah. were like, what can I make with this? People were saying all kinds of oh. wild shit. So it's cool to like, you know, think mm-hmm. of, you know, your thoughts behind like trying to be an innovative on what yeah. you have. Yeah, it's like you're unchopped. What do you hate making? Um, like what's your least favorite thing to make? Um, I hate my least favorite thing to do slash make would be writing on cakes, writing on cakes. Absolutely. Do not (laughs) enjoy that. Like, and I tell people now, like if you want a birthday cake, I could make it nice. I'm not writing happy. (laughs) Like I will do, I've thrown out cakes and I've remade cakes because of that. Like, cause I'm so tech anal about it. Um, Yeah. I would make the whole cake cool. I'm super confident and I am literally crying, sweating. I'm nervous. Like my hand's shaking. <laughs> like, and I'm like, get a cute candle. I just cannot. So I've just learned that I'm not doing it. It's not worth it. Like to me, it's not as pretty anymore. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Please don't ever ask me to write happy birthday. <laughs> it's the worst thing. Oh, well, that's good. That's uh, those are both that's good so answers. Uh, okay. Second to last question. You're getting ready to go on a road trip. You go into a gas station to pick a snack. What is it? Um, just one. Yeah, you're like like nuts, nuts. Yes, it would be like a trail mix or nuts. Okay. Yeah, I'm not like I don't want all the sweet stuff. So I'm more like um, just give me some almonds, some walnuts, maybe throw some dry cranberries in there. Yeah, crunchy earth. Simple. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, (laughs) Last question: If you could have a conversation with anyone alive or dead, who would it be and why? 
it would be my nana. Um, she, cause she's passed away 20 years ago, I'll say. Um, and I would like to see what she thinks of me now as an adult. Yeah. Um, so the two sandwiches on the menu are named after my nana and my grandpa. Um, so everyone's always like, who are those people? So those are the two that that's the Ray and the Alita. Um, but I would like to see, I was 17 when she passed away. So still a kid, like yeah. still don't remember tons of stuff. Um, yeah. My pap was 16 and I think about that all the time. Yeah. Like you're just like you're a kid. Even, you don't care. It's no. like, you don't care as much as you should. You don't spend no. as much time. Right. And that's what I would like. I would love to go to her kitchen and like, what do you need help with? Yeah. What be an I adult for you. Right. And like offer some, have right. something to offer them. Yeah. Rather than just being like a little kid that's just getting, you know. Right. I just want a snack. I'm just yeah. like, just give me something. Like, yeah. that's Now, what if it's not a loved one? If it's someone that like is not family or anything? Um, I just started getting to like reading about Anthony Bourdain. So I would like that. Would be, he seems like very, um, very real. He's like, probably the most picked person on I, here. I would, I know. And as soon as I said that, I was like, oh, I'm sure it's no, it's a good said. answer though, because he's, I have his book right there. Kitchen confidential. Like it's, he, uh, his audio book is actually, if you have like Spotify, it's yeah. narrated by him. Oh. It's a really good audio book. That's what I should do. Cause I think that's on my bookshelf too. Just yeah. Sitting there. And it's cool because it's, it's just read by him. So yeah. like if you're in there prepping, you can put it on. I can't, I can't listen to audio books while I'm working because yeah, nothing, I don't retain anything. Right. Uh, but what I do like doing is I'll put an audio book on now and mm-hmm. I'll read along with the audio book. Really? Yeah. It's weird, yeah. but, uh, I enjoy it. I'm reading this Stephen King book about like, you know, dragons and fairy tale type shit but the audiobook really? i'll just put it on and i'll read along with it but anthony bourdain's a good answer yeah he it's just seems like he would get down dirty for sure like, that know, dude has seen some he has some demons yeah he has been some places and seen some things yeah and i think that i think that's cool absolutely yeah i loved our conversation thank you I appreciate you coming over and talking to me. It wasn't so nerve wracking. I wasn't. I hope not. I mean, I know you were nervous coming over, but like, I think that, uh, I think that what you're doing is like beyond impressive. Well, thank you. you know, it's impressive to even just like run a restaurant and like have a team behind you and be able to execute it. But to be a one woman show is like, yeah, it's crazy. And Ben texted me after uh, that he met you yeah. and he was like, it's insane that she does all that stuff herself. Yeah, he was really nice. He's yeah. a great guy. Yeah, He's a I, get, great guy. I get that a lot, and I like. I'm just like, thanks. Like, yeah, I'm just doing it. Like, well, you I just kind of like, keep your head down and keep moving. Yeah, I just, you just got to do what you have to do. Like, I don't need any like, um, you know, whatever awards or anything. Like, it's nice when people recognize it for sure. Yeah, you know, so it's nice. But like, you never kind of like look at how good you are. If yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you're, you're humble. Yeah, and so you're like, okay, that actually is nice to hear that. You know, well, that's what makes people like what you're doing yeah. because you're not an asshole. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully, you know, <laughs> hopefully that, uh, that comes off, but yeah. what, uh, now before, you know, before we go, take a second, promote your spot, promote where people could follow you, your address, the whole thing. Okay. Um, we're Dagny's Eatery. I always say we, cause I like to think there's a team here. I know so it's if Everyone's weird. always wondering why I'm saying we. It's, yeah. it's me. It's me, myself, um, and right, I. Right, but it's kind of like, I feel like that's like, whoa, too it's much It's like the credit. proper way to say yeah, it. Yeah, like, here, this is where I am. Okay, so we are um, located in Carnegie, 114 East Main Street. You could follow me on Facebook and Instagram's Dagny's Eatery. Right now, we are open Thursday through Monday, 8 to 3. And then we will open later when it gets nicer. Yeah, got to follow um, along with everything's the Dagny's media. Eatery, everything. Um, I think we have a... What is it? TikTok account, but it's not I'm not a big TikToker. So yeah. just so, do the Instagram, Facebook. I try to like do updates daily on Instagram. If anything changes, any menu items, any specials, I try to keep people in the loop. So, you know, you're not upset if you come and I don't have something or if we're closed or something like that. Um, but I tell people like, look at our Instagram stories a lot. Our that's the best way to like that. keep up to date. Yeah. And a lot of people like tell me like, you know what I do? I wake up and I go to your page and I see what's you're having today. And I'm like, so it's working. Um, like Instagram or social media to me, like I'm not really on it personally, Yeah, but business wise, it's amazing. It's a big like deal. It's, I mean, it's, it's free. I was, it's uh, amazing. I was getting my haircut on Sunday and my barber pulled out his phone and he was like, I was like, what are you looking at? And, uh, he was like, I'm trying to see smokes update. Smoke is, uh, like a barbecue place in Lawrenceville, mm-hmm. but every Sunday they have, uh, these insane house made donuts. Oh. First time I ever had one. And it was, I mean, it might've been the best donut I've yeah. ever had. It was a raspberry, uh, creme brulee donut 
but they post their updates on there. And it's like, that's just like a way people get their information is they go to their social media yeah. and they see the updates on there. Yeah. And I used to think it was annoying. I used to be like, all right, we get it. You have the same thing every day. Yeah. Like I used to think I was annoying. Like, okay, how many days are you going to post a cinema roll? It's necessary it evil. It literally works between whether you are a repeat customer or a new one or someone sent it to you. Um, even places I go to, I'm always like, Oh, they have this today. Okay. They do have this. Like, and it's similar places like mine that might not have it on the menu, yeah. you know, and they just kind of, it's in rotation. Um, I think social media is great for small businesses. So gotta great. have it. Yeah. So everyone follow her, everyone follow me, everyone follow all the other great people that we have on here. But, uh, I do, I appreciate you coming over. Uh, everyone else. Thank you for listening as usual each and every week. We're back with another great guest doing great things in the city. Thank you for listening. Call you right back. <laughs>